So I think we are live, yeah? Yes, we are. What's up, not just developers? Welcome to a new live stream. Today is a special live stream, and um, we're gonna talk about why is this live stream special in a moment. But yeah, in this live stream, we're gonna build a crypto price tracker, an application that will uh, help us uh, be informed about the prices of uh, cryptocurrencies and never miss a dip. All right, so what exactly we're gonna build uh, today? We're gonna start with the homepage of a price tracker application. And it's gonna be quite similar with applications like CoinMarketCap or CoinGecko if you're using any of this. So here we will display a list of uh, cryptocurrencies with their details like name, price, uh, market cap and so on. And after that, after we display this long list of all the cryptocurrencies, then we will get into the details and specifics of one spe one cryptocurrency. And on the details page, we are gonna render more um, information about that cryptocurrency, like the, um, again, the name price, um, the ticker, and also most importantly is the graph. We're gonna render beautiful graphs in React Native with a cool library. And um, yeah, this, are, this is the plan for today. At the end, we're gonna, of course, put everything together with navigation so that we can navigate from one screen to another. And um, yeah, I'm super excited about this, uh, this build. Uh, everything is gonna be done with Expo and JavaScript uh, because this is the, the easiest way uh, to get started with mobile development in, in React Native. So if you're a beginner, uh, the installation of Expo is very, very simple. You just have to install uh, Expo with NPM and that's it. You don't have to uh, go through the hurdles of uh, setting up Android Studio or Xcode. And if you're more experienced, you already know the advantages of Expo. And yeah, we're not sponsoring this video, but I love working with them. Uh, so uh, why is this live stream that important? It's important because I want you to, um, to introduce you to someone new, someone who uh, has recently joined our team. I mean, he joined the team uh, quite a while ago with helping a lot behind the scenes. Uh, but today he's going to take the stage and he's going to do the tutorial um, the crypto tracker application. So I want you, everyone, to meet Lucas. Hello, Lucas. Welcome. Hello, 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 guys. Uh, I'm very excited to be here and to build this application. Uh, I'll introduce myself a little bit, although Vadim already said that I was helping a little bit on the backstage. And uh, yeah, so my name is Lucas. I am a software developer. I usually mostly work with React Native. Uh, therefore, uh, I'm creating an application in React Native. And I really hope you'll enjoy the stream and the build uh, because, yeah, I'm really excited myself about uh, crypto and programming. So I'm pretty we'll sure see. We, I'm pretty sure we will enjoy it. So, Hopefully. yeah, like uh, a little bit of background, Lucas was... Um, uh, we were co colleagues at university and also we were both uh, working as teacher assistant uh, at university and um, teaching programming to, uh, to first year students. And yeah, like that's where we started uh, enjoying teaching and sharing our experience. And also Lucas worked with me um, at my startup Fitinium, my previous startup, and now uh, actually, Lucas uh, took my place there. Hmm. I see you. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, he's taking care of the technical side there, so he knows what he's talking about. All right, so um, back to our presentation. Uh, what's the next step here? Yes, I want to talk about why, um, why we're doing this. Um, during the month of December, I'm going, going to spend most of my time on uh, finishing up and building the, uh, my course, my premium course that you can uh, join the waitlist at academy.nojust.dev. This is a huge course. It's a full stack mobile development with React Native and AWS Amplify. 
but in this course, uh, in comparison with YouTube tutorials, we are getting like like 10x of uh, the amount of content and the amount of features that we are implementing there. So um, yeah, it's huge. Like you definitely uh, need to check it out at academy.nojust.dev. Join the waitlist, and uh, at the beginning of the next year, hopefully it's going to be uh, ready and you'll be able to join it um, again. So yeah, uh, during the December, I'm going to be all in <laughs> on the course, and Lucas will help me with uh, the usual Friday to uh, live builds at 3 p.m. GMT. So yeah, back to our build for today. Uh, I always encourage you to follow along and don't just watch these videos. So if you are following along, uh, you will need a couple of assets such as dummy data that you don't need to uh, write yourself, images and so on. Also including this PDF presentation, you can get it as usual at ss.nojas.dev slash crypto tracker. And also uh, related to the uh, prerequisites, you will need the Expo environment setup. And we actually have on the channel uh, a video that will help you if you don't have it already. So without further ado, I think we can get started. Lucas, yeah. would you like to take the stage? Yeah, mm -hmm. let's go. All right, so um, here is the first steps to start the project. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's exactly what are uh, we gonna do. Uh, and we can initialize simply a new project with expo command, expo init, and give it a name. So as we said, we're doing crypto price tracker and let's press enter. Now uh, Expo will ask us if we want any kind of template, but as we wanted to keep this tutorial as clean as as simple as possible so that a new person with zero experience in React Native could take it over. So we are gonna start blank because that's the simplest choice. Uh, right now, it will take some time to install all dependencies and prepare the project for us. But after it's done, we can start start working. Uh, I will quickly, after it's done, explain the structure of what we're going to have. Uh, of course, right now, this blank project don't really uh, give us much folders or much uh, directories to yeah, it's explain. basically a blank uh, yeah. canvas. Um, uh -huh. Okay, let's go here. Let's start our development server with yarn start or expo start. Uh, that's very important to uh, or say. NPM start. Or npm start uh, as well. So uh -huh, use port instead. Yeah, let's use that. So now I have my development server running. Also with Expo, it's very easy. If you have Expo Go application, you can scan this QR code and simply create your application on the mobile device right away. That's why it's it, very easy to start. It doesn't uh, open up the browser window? It did open, but it opened in okay. uh, another screen. I can show you that. I think from here it's easier yeah, yeah. To, to manage so, everything. That, yeah, that's how it's going to look. It's very easy. Here's the QR code. Uh, here you can click, like, run on iOS simulator on in web browser. So we're going to come back here after I explain uh, the structure a little bit for uh, the project. Okay. And... Uh, uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Let me, uh, so first of all, you can open either application from the terminal or go uh, to the file uh, at VS Code, uh, click open folder, and easily find the folder. Mine is in desktop, uh, React Native projects, and here is crypto price tracker. So let's open it up. Don't um, open the homework folder with 45 gigabytes. Yeah, <laughs> that might take some time to load. So here is the simple structure. It's very uh, straightforward because, as we said, we chose a blank project. And it actually, right now, it has only 
package the JSON with your dependencies, some scripts to help you out, but you shouldn't like, it's not very, something very big right now. We'll go over it later a bit uh, when installing new dependencies. And basically the app.js file, which shows you, which is the basically entry point of your application. When you run your application, that's the first screen that's gonna show up. So uh, yeah, let's, we have to run expo start again here. Hopefully it will, because it disconnected when I opened my project. Yes, let's open on this port. And now we can click run iOS simulator and it will open here. It asked me to upgrade, but I'm not going to do that right now. I think you should. I'm not sure. Like, let's see if it will work. It will, because that's how I was working previously. Yeah. I didn't want it to like take time. To yeah, just update. a little tip. Um, if you need to update the Expo Go on an emulator, the easiest way to do it, uh, you don't have to download anything. You just have to uh, remove it, uninstall, and then do uh, a run on simulator, and it will automatically install the, the latest version of Expo Go on that client. But yeah, if it works, like let's, let's keep going I'll... with this. I'll do that. Yeah, I'll have to do that definitely. <laughs> so as you see in this uh, development server, it says everything basically logs everything. Uh, can you zoom in on this screen a bit? Uh, yes, I can. Uh, let me check um, uh, here. Yeah, is. this is enough. Yeah, thank you. So it's a, it logs everything. Uh, we can see that it started Metro uh, Bundler at 17.13 uh, local time. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, it started opening the application on iPhone 11 and it was building a bundle JavaScript. And here it is, it opened our application. So in order to test if uh, it's hot reloading and refreshes after any changes made, we can simply do, uh, very famous hello world, I click save and it refreshed here. So that means uh, we are good to go. <laughs> we can continue uh, uh, working. So right now, as Vadim showed in the uh, PDF, we need, uh, Ooh, first of all, I'm it's gonna... very important to decide where you start. So the best place is to take uh, the simplest uh, component and start with that, which in our case is, yeah, the list, list item component. Here, yes. Yeah, that's going to be our current uh, challenge to create something similar to this. In this stream, we're not going to create that little graph in the middle, but in future streams, if you enjoy this uh, tutorial, we can expand on this application very, very much and add even that one. So let's uh, start with that. First of all, uh, most crypto users and programmers like uh, dark theme. So we are not going to keep our uh, application uh, white and we're going to use uh, black theme. Sorry. So, uh, and also it is very important to note that uh, straight black is not that good because um, um, it's it, it's it reflects some colors a lot worse than uh, dark gray. And mm -hmm. I did some Googling and I uh, found a good color that uh, that can reflect other colors very well. And it is basically what Google uses in their uh, dark modes as well. So it is uh, hashtag one, two, one, two, one, two. I think if I'm not mistaken, Let's test. Mm, yep, it is kind of black, but yeah, you, you, you've done your research. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've done, I actually tried to look into this to, uh, for the best color, but right now there's a problem. We don't see our status bar. It's good that it's very easy to change it. You just uh, change here to light because we need it to be white. Uh, and that's it. We have our status bar. We don't see the uh, 
Hello, Hello World, world anymore, but it's because it is uh, dark. So we can just simply uh, set text to it by mm -hmm, color white. And white, uh, of course, works on dark gray very well. So that's uh, that was our first steps. Right now, we can actually go into creating the the actual component uh, that we were just talking about. So just to remind, this is how it looks. So if to yeah. um, to split it into smaller components, like this is the smaller component that we could find on that page, and this component it has like what? It has a couple of columns I see here, right? Yeah, uh, and the first column is the the Bitcoin image, like the image of that cryptocurrency. Then there is a column with two rows that contains the name and then the um, symbol, right? Yep. Uh, some change percentage change, and on yep. the right side we have the market cap and the current price. Yep. So uh, thank you. That's what we that's what we're gonna build right now. The, um, so let's start uh, with an image. Let's import image from React Native. The thing is that I don't have, I don't have an image. I'll copy it from the assets that we provided to you. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, yeah, let's delete this text. We don't really need it anymore. And let's, first things first, let's just display the image because that sometimes it's hard in itself because of the style, and if you participated in Vadim's uh, Squid Game Challenge, you should definitely know this already. So let's add height. Mm, let's leave it at 15 right now. I'm not sure uh, which one we will choose, but yeah. And also for image, what's required is source. So uh, we will give URI. Uh, so we are giving basically passing an object with URI and uh, soon we'll, I'll copy real quick the string uh, let me, here. Uh, let me go to the assets folder and here it is. Okay, let's paste it. And um, yeah, so I hope this is a correct um, image let's hope so now uh oh vadim is uh, the screen is good should i make it closer further um uh, it's good you can close the um, sidebar it's gonna okay. give you more space for the code yeah like yeah. this so right now um we uh don't see the coin item still uh and we should make make it bigger to actually see why we're not displaying it. That's the first uh, setback. The Let's... first one. Ch yeah. Check uh, if a image URL is uh, is correct. I think it is. Let's yeah. Let's go. That's at least what. Yeah, it is. It should be good. So. so for... <laughs> yeah, where's the oh here it is. It's All right, it was downloading top. quite slow. That's why. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but as you see, it's uh, not very good to have it like that. So let's do some changes. Uh, first of all, let's make it smaller. Like I had fifteen. On yeah, 15. Uh, someone in comments is uh, is saying that you said height height instead of width. You don't have width there. Oh, that's very good. Uh, notice. I didn't actually notice this one. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. I uh, didn't let's even see that. Let's make it bigger right now. And here we can see it. So, yeah, thank you very much. I would have spent a lot of time on this one. And I just said that uh, we could have learned in your Squid Games. So, but yeah, that's good. We can um, have. We can give uh, some pad uh, margin right now, so to the container because it's going on a status bar. And later on, I'll show you uh, basically a view that you can use uh, in order to make Solve it like issue. yeah safe area. It will never go there or never go here. Uh, React Native has that uh, as well. It's called safe area view, but. Uh, even React Native in their documentation is suggesting to use the one from React Navigation. 
-hmm. So let, we'll use that one instead later on. Right now, we'll just, when we install, right now, let's just give some. Do you need to add margin or padding? Because yeah, padding, it's padding, thinking yeah, if, you, if you add yeah. padding, padding margin, you will see the yeah. background behind. So what we wanted to do probably is to add some padding. Yeah, yeah, true. And later, of course, also with uh, nav React Navigation, we're able to pass some themes which mm -hmm. we'll, I'll show you later as well, which helps uh, with background colors and stuff. Okay, so we can see the image. That's uh, uh, already... Can you increase the font size a bit? Uh, yes, let me remember which buttons are here. That's better? Uh, yep, and I can or do even more. Like this. I think it's good now. Okay, that's very close. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, so right now we have an image. Uh, the other thing is we need to display some, let me go here. Actually, to make it easier for me, I'll just put it in a new line. That's also a good practice to have it like <laughs> that if uh, it's very, very long. Mm, and now we can add some, the name. Uh, so we'll use text. Actually, I'm going to open, uh, yeah, the design to myself because I, I am working uh, from the yeah, to, re to remind here, we have two rows in that column, the name and underneath the uh, position, which is one, then the symbol. Yeah. And I'm not sure if you plan to add the percentage change as well. Uh, I will add it, but right now, uh, I'm yeah, quickly just going to display to see if I'm displaying uh, all data correctly. So we can create another style and call it uh, title, which will be have color of white and also it should be a little bit bigger size. Uh, so let's give it. Hmm, 16 for now. We'll see uh, what's, what's better, uh, but I think 16 will work right now well. Uh, okay, and also we need to apply that style. So in order to apply that style to this text, I'm going to create a new prop that's called style and uh, pass it from styles, so from here. And also I need to uh, access one of these. So right now, as it's also suggesting, I can access container or type style, I mistyped again, so title. And uh, right now uh, we can see this, that's good. Also, I see that uh, the uh, name is bold, so we can give some font weight uh, and make it, yeah, make, here you can give any weight you want from numbers if you know exact, but we'll just give a simple bold and it will work good. Mm, so uh, we have this, and on the other side uh, of this name, we have the current price on this, because uh, how we're going to have it right now. So uh, have two rows. Uh, one will be the name and the price, and the below row will have uh, the uh, ticker, percentage, mm -hmm. and market cap. So let's give Don't, it... don't you think it's better to do it the other way around, not to have uh two rows with two columns but to have two columns with two rows because for example um uh, if yeah. you add here the graph in the middle uh the graph doesn't actually maybe here it's in the same row with the name but what if you want to add it actually in the middle of these two rows yeah know? right now it's in the same with yeah we can do that as well um so Let's just then uh, give it uh, a ticker. So it's called BTC, but it's then not title. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Okay. And also uh, before this, uh, we need to give um, another, uh, create another text so like this. And it's uh, one. The Later, position. Yeah. yeah, the position of the cryptocurrency on its uh, market cap right now. We're gonna—that's how we're gonna list them. 
and also after the percentage change, which right now, as I see, Bitcoin is 0.63% down. Uh, so that's what we're gonna take. Okay, we have all that. So we can just create another. Sorry. Another one. Yes, uh, called text and make it color white. So, uh, so for now we're just, the style is going to give uh, just that. And actually, uh, may, let's make it like this, like this. So you can Ooh, create some, clip. some advanced things. But that's yeah, so idea. I'm not sure on Windows, but on, uh, I think on MacBook, you press option yeah. and select what you, where you want to write. So then we can just uh, tab and it will write on every row. On Windows, it's alt. And you yeah. can yeah, so put the course cursor in multiple places to write yes. at the same time, which is very uh, useful uh, starting out because of yeah uh, things like these. Uh, okay, so we have uh, one of the columns that we needed, and because that's one column, let's wrap it in a view and put it like that. And uh, yeah, so actually we need in this column to Bitcoin will be, the name will be on its own, but all of these three things will be in a row, which means uh, that we need to create, uh, put them in their own view mm -hmm. uh, in order to apply a style called the uh, flex direction which changes the direction of your basically, uh, yeah. The, How uh, items are spread, yeah. Yeah, it's so you can a column do, or in a row. Yeah, exactly. But right now it's in column, uh, that's the default, and let's change it into S here, into a row. And voila, we have them, all of them like that. So as far as, uh, we, we can see that all of them kind of require some spacing, so we can ha give some margin right so let's say five and here we have some spacing between them mm -hmm. so but there is one more thing uh, so bitcoin uh, logo has to be in front of uh, this text so what are we gonna do is also so we have this whole view and for now what are we gonna do give a flex direction here to row i think yeah and now we have everything nicely. Uh, there's one more thing that I would like to add because as you see, it's very close and mm -hmm. it's not that good. We need some space, uh, especially in Corona uh, pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> so we give some margin right and let's give 10. I think that looks good. But we also can see that Bitcoin logo is not really aligned in the middle. It's yeah aligned at the top. So what are we going to do uh, to solve this is pass align self because we're aligning the, the, the image itself. That's why it's called align self and just give it center. Oh, but it's going to align it because that's the whole, um, mm -hmm. right now this one is, uh, so what are we going to do here? I also think you, you're going to just add another, you're going to leave the container to be as the page container yeah. and you're going to wrap the image, image in the view. next view in another view that yeah. is very specific to um, um to to the row of a coin yeah. so you you just leave out the st status bar from this container because it doesn't make sense to be inside them yeah it's like this yeah exactly and also a quick tip to uh, uh fix uh identification problems uh you can press Again, probably Alt Shift. Uh, I'm not sure on Windows actually, but whoever uses Mac, it's Option Shift and F, and it fixes uh, the mm -hmm. identification problems itself and cleans up the code, which looks a lot. On better. my system, I have Prettier set up, and whenever I save, it automatically you know, applies Prettier. So that's, that's also another option. Yeah, that's a very good option to be honest. And so, what are we gonna do then? Instead of passing flex direction here, 
Uh, okay, right now this is wrapped in here, so we need to apply some styles. Mm. I think you can apply apply a style because it might need some some margins, padding, and so on. So yeah, yeah. I would extract it in a in its oh, own uh, style. You're thinking like uh, completely new. That's a, I think that's a good idea. So we can say um, coin container. Yes. And, and Usually for me, uh, you you can continue coding. Usually for me, uh, just by having the style a named style it uh, is easier for you to understand what is that view, like what does it represent? Because you, you look, there are a lot, like 10 views and you don't understand what's going on. But if you see like styles conta coin container, oh, it's the view of a coin container. So I think it's even easier to, to understand the code. Exactly, yeah. And actually we can give some styles right away. We need to give a bottom a border, basically a line under um, to represent to separate each coin so what are we going to do is border bottom width and we are going to give it 0 0.3 because we need it to be very very thin and that's the thinnest you can go you can also go i think hairline thin from style sheets export style sheet dot hairline thin and it's going to be 0 0.3 so yeah hairline width not but that's going to be oh, basically the same. That's nice. I didn't know about this one. So yeah, this yeah. is actually very, that's the smallest one that you can get with uh, yeah, uh, border bottom width. Also, we need to set a border bottom color. And I have written down which color to use because I was looking for a good color very long. I think and... a very light gray is called, is called Gainsborough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but here we have it even lighter so it's so light that it's barely visible but when you have multiple of them then it's yeah. pretty uh, good and maybe actually we can uh, have it a little bit bigger and uh, to to let's see what feels better uh, no i like the that way a lot better get the so ruler <laughs> yeah <laughs> let's leave it like that and what uh, so as you i'm not sure if you can see this line can you uh on the live stream i cannot see it but people will follow and they will see it on their device definitely so the the problem uh let's add it gray to at least showcase so you see the line oh, and now, it's now we can see it very very close to basically it's stick together stuck together so what are we gonna give some padding uh, some around padding. everything yeah. and let's give 15. So if you just say padding uh, without like uh, horizontal, vertical or right, left, up, bottom, top, then it will give padding to everything, uh, which is what I need. I need 15 uh, in the whole coin item list. Mm, and that's that's it right now we have we're shaping something beautiful. Yeah, here. it looks already something good. Yeah, uh, and, and I see, see the, the result. I see another spelling mistake. It's Bitcoin. Now, now oh. it's Bitcoin. <laughs> I was looking, what is the issue? Like something is off. Yeah. Like something <laughs> is weird. So, so um, if we look at this design, the last step is to add another column that is going to be aligned to the right. And it has uh, as a title um, the price, the current price, and down below is the market cap, right? Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, so that's what are, what are we gonna do? Mm. Okay, let's create another view and a few, one text with title, as Vadim said, mm, and some definition here. So right now, as I see, Bitcoin is 56,000 265.09 and that's what they're gonna leave uh yep and market cap of bitcoin right now here it shouldn't be the title but we need a simple text and current market cap is so oh we also need to say that it's market cap and then uh let's say 1.076 
that's uh, this what? is a market cap of bitcoin right one yeah. trillion yeah that's only i bitcoin. remember <laughs> yeah, you can continue working but i remember when um apple or amazon was the first company that passed one trillion market cap but here is a cryptocurrency hello <laughs> i'm here <laughs> <laughs> yep exactly and so we need to oh okay so that's uh presents a problem but we need to somehow separate th these two columns nicely uh in in order to do that there are multiple honest, ways which way do you think it's gonna work um to be honest i let's see if we have this here view but it's not that great to with uh, automatic margins it works really nicely so on the last column, you can say margin left should be auto. And if oh, you do really? this, it will, uh, it will take the whole available space as margin and it will move it to the other side. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So I guess That's this is, uh, I think, the, probably easiest, the way. easiest. Yeah, I agree. That's probably the Because easiest. before that, I was wrapping again some other parts in another view and then spreading them apart. But you keep That's adding what I would have done and... actually right now. But that's a good, very good tip, uh, actually. So it's a lot easier to do it and a lot cleaner. Uh, Not probably I've, I got it from, from the live stream. So we all learn here as yeah. we go. <laughs> exactly. That's true. That's true. Uh, okay. Uh, so we have actually pretty nice application already, but application, I say coin item, but we need a little icon here uh, to represent if this percentage is, is it minus that or is it plus that? Of course we can add a minus, but let's implement some icons. And the good thing with Expo, Expo comes with already icons pre-installed. So the only thing you need to do is go to Expo vector icons. Is it pre-installed in the blank yes. template? Yes, yes. Oh my God. Really? Yeah, it's very, it's so good. And then okay. let's just, yeah, let's, Select the uh, card down, copy this. Actually, uh, if I'm being very honest, I thought it's not pre-installed, but yesterday I tried and it was. So <laughs> let's be honest here. I actually didn't know that it's pre-installed as well, but that's a very good thing. And let's copy the component itself. Uh, so where do we need it? We need it right after Bitcoin. And let's add. Right now we don't see it because as you see, the color is black. Vadim, are you still here? Ah, uh, yes, I'm I always here. I, you didn't say anything. I thought maybe the no, live stream. I'm chatting stuff. with uh, with the live audience here. Gotcha. They all love you. Oh, so thank you so much. I'm... <laughs> thank you very much uh, because I'm very nervous. <laughs> okay, and let's, uh, right now let's set a simple white color. Uh, because later on, we, as I said, we're going to have to decide, okay, are we showing it down? Are we showing up? And also mm -hmm. a lot of, a lot of multiple, uh, different Options. scenarios mm -hmm. and colors and uh, different icons. But right now let's leave it as white. And also I think this is, uh, very big. So let's make it a bit smaller. So now we're going to play around with. I actually had noted myself the correct size that I enjoyed. So let me find it because that's you can try be... something like, you know, 12, 14 doesn't have to be perfect, but I like it to be, <laughs> I would like it to be perfect. <laughs> 12. Well, maybe. Okay. Let's go with 12. Uh, and then we need some styles here. Um, so let's apply styles in line and also. Let's give it a line self and center. And mm -hmm. now, as you see, it's aligned in the center. The only with thing the that- With text and the same line, right? Horizontally. Uh, yeah, with the text. Do you need and also some spacing around that? Uh, around the icon? Yeah. Yes, I need some space on the right, exactly. And let's give it five. Now it looks a lot better. Let's, yep. as we talked, put it like this to make it you can more use readable. your trick i can use my format. trick actually yeah it yes. works. i just wanted to be like show everything <laughs> but yeah that works as well uh and yeah i think we mm -hmm. are shaping up pretty good 
The only thing that I don't like here is that these uh, are very close to each other. So I would like to have some margin on the bottom of title, uh, which I'm going to do margin bottom and five. And now I like, mm, yeah, I like it a lot more. That's how it looks on coin market cap. Actually, it's a little less. Uh, I like to be, oh, no, not this one. I like to be perfectionist. So <laughs> this one is a lot better. Mm, okay. And uh, do we need anything else to be, oh, we can, we need some styles around this one because as yeah you... some some people were saying something about you forgot about one and i'm looking like well, which one <laughs> yeah, yeah oh yeah, yeah yeah it's like uh some to add some background to this one some yeah. round corners yeah okay yeah so that's uh, exactly what are we gonna do and um uh, um let's go and change first of all is it just one or is it hashtag one um i can check it's yeah. uh it's just one yeah okay it's just one so that that means that we need to uh i think it's bold also uh, right now i opened my design and i think yeah it's open. It's... so yeah. let's create a new rank and uh, as i said we needed font weight to be bold and yeah yeah, you can continue working. Oh, okay. I'm just going to ask for this question. Why you didn't use real data for this application? So stay tuned and we are going to get there. So we are taking it slowly, like step by step, uh, not to get everyone confused right from the beginning. So we're going to get to the real data. In a way, real. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's going to be provided by an API. What is the API used for this project? Uh, it's called CoinGecko. That's where we are going to get the data from. Okay, we have some styles on the number itself, which already looks good, but we need to wrap it in a view in order to put some styles. Uh, I think you can uh, work I around without do... the view as well. Like if you yeah, add background possible, color yeah. to, the, um, to the text and add some padding. Possible, yeah, yeah. To do it like this. And um, I remember it was 585858. Five, five, and uh, then give some padding. I'm not sure. Let's say five, I think. No, definitely not five. But let's give also border radius uh, because I, yeah, in the design, those it's are corners are round. Yeah. And for that, yeah. we will use a border radius. Um, mm, so that's the thing. I cannot what? put. Uh, you cannot like, add border radius? Yeah. To the, um, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. To the text. So I have okay. to wrap it in view. Uh, let's add view like that and voila. So let's call this, let's create another style. And right now we don't have it, but let's call it, let's say, um, rank, 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 yeah, container. rank container. That's easier. Rank container. So, okay. We have this one rank container and let's copy paste this one here. Also, give some padding. Mm, five, I remember, is too big, but we'll change it later. And also, we need border uh, radius. Let, first, let's give five. We'll see how it looks later. So, yeah, this is definitely too big uh, as um, padding five. So, and also, I see that we don't need that much padding on the top and the uh, bottom. We actually don't need almost any padding. So what are we going to do instead is just give horizontal padding. And yeah. that one that looks a little bit better right away. So uh, also the other thing was bad. We don't need margin right here because as you see, it makes this part uh, bigger. So let's delete margin. Yeah. Right. Bless you from there. Thank you. And let's add it here. Uh, okay, it's already shaping up. I think that's uh, that looks similar enough, no? Yeah, yeah, I think that um, we can move on. Uh, yeah, let's see how it looks with the six. No, oh, not no, here. Uh, 
yeah, yeah I meant here, but now five. Very good. So right now, <laughs> maybe five point five. <laughs> right now, I think uh, we have everything for one item, except the colors uh, for the percentage. And in order to display and change colors on the icon and change the icon and change the color of here, we need to do some checks. And do you want to do it now or when you actually implement data? It actually doesn't matter for me. I was thinking like to completely finish, but we can do after. Yeah, I think you, you can do when you will integrate data to to do that checks. Yeah, the, for me, it fits as well. Uh, so then that means we are with this part, we are done. Uh, what is the next thing uh, to go to do? So basically, OK, we have one item here, right? But what if we need multiple items? Yes, we could possibly go and copy this uh, whole chunk of code and paste it to have two of them and maybe even three. But uh, you see, the code is getting very long, very fast. And it's very, yeah, as probably you already understand that it's very bad to do like that, uh, which means we need to put them in a separate basic container component, component. component. Let's, yeah let's call it like that and in order to do that we will create a new folder called source src for short uh, and this will contain all of our directories code and everything that we create and let's create another folder inside called components and usually you put in this components folder you put uh, items and components that you reuse throughout your whole application that it should be easily accessible. That's uh, why React Native is nice because you can build everything like Lego and reuse the same bricks. So oh, it's a nice. Um... Yeah, actually, when I was learning, I remember one the video tutorial that I was watching said this, and it stuck in my head throughout the whole uh, I career. But I don't know. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Let's uh, create another folder in components called coin, um, coin item. That's, mm -hmm. that's going to be a good name. And in this coin item compo uh, folder directory, let's create an index.jsx. All right. And here, it's getting a bit more exciting. First of all, I don't have a fancy uh, way Snippets. to yeah, snippets. Uh, so I'll need to rewatch Vadim's uh, video about cool VS Code uh, extensions and stuff like that to install it. But I'm going to do it with my bare hands right now. And people uh, already take it uh, way ahead and suggesting to introduce Flatlist. Yeah, we, we are getting there. We are getting there yeah. step so, by step. Yeah, that's good. Uh, also, OK, we created a function called coin item. Let's export it. Or uh, default coin item. And uh, yeah, let's return here something. But now, mm -hmm, go here. So this is the minimum, bare minimum of a uh, um, new component. You yeah. just import React, which uh, later we will not have to do it because it's going to be automatically. Uh, then you define your function. Uh, your component as a simple function that will return some JSX. And after that, you yep. export this function to be able to import it somewhere else. And Lucas will uh, show what JSX we're going to put in that return statement. Exactly. And a good question where we're still here, why JSX instead of JS? JSX means that your file contains JSX code. And the JSX code is, um, Lucas, can you... You can start copying it and yeah. like this thing that we see here inside the return statement, which looks quite similar to HTML or XML. This is our JSX and it helps us write um, render components in a user friendly way because without JSX, uh, it would be a mess. I don't even want to, to show you how to do it without JSX. I don't know if you look as um, remember like how how it is done without JSX, but it's bad. 
So that's why you need the JSX on the file extension. Actually, it will work as well with GS, uh, but it's the norm to to call your files that contain JSX with .jsx. Yeah, and usually if you have ESLint set up, then it will complain about the name if it has yeah. JSX elements and it's G called JS. And it, then it will so the out. thing that you did here is you copied the view, what? The view so, with the style coin container, right? Yep. I just, uh, I didn't finish yet. I need to still put it here styles, but I just took hey. all of the code. <laughs> Look here. Thank you very much for your super sticker. That's uh, going straight to uh, Lithuania. You are helping uh, <laughs> Lithuania. <laughs> That's where is Lucas from. Thank, Thank you very you much for the donation. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> as I was explaining, uh, I didn't copy everything, but yeah, I just removed all of the code that we had here. Uh, and as far as you see, we don't have anything left here. So, but we still need to explore the styles. So I'm not sure, Vadim, which, um, how are you doing this usually? Are you creating the styles in the same folder or file um, or you create another file called styles? Uh, I create another file. You can start creating another file, but That's I'm going to explain the way I think about this. If it's a super, super small uh, component, like, I don't know, a simple button that fits on the same screen, and it doesn't have a lot of styles, I usually declare the styles in the same file. But if um, um, the code gets bigger and the um, component contains a lot of code there, uh, then I like to separate them just because I don't like scrolling up and down a lot. So you just, if you work with the styles, you move to the styles file. If you work with uh, um, GSX and with uh, the structure of your application, you will go to the index.jsx. And now you just have to import it there. Yep, I will clean up here because here we don't need any. This is in our app.js, you removed everything except the container, right? Yeah, because I moved uh, everything that we used in this styles folder, which we will import in, that's why we create these different directories. Folders. Yeah, folders, directories, because it's easy. Okay, you see coin item, open it. You see that uh, coin item has an index file, which will display everything, and it has its own styles, which we will right now import easily by just saying import styles from and select from styles, the same directory. And then, yep, we can reuse all the styles here. Hopefully, I changed everything correctly. If no, this is a good convention as well. Always leave uh, spaces uh, before and after bracket, one space. Mm. I think that in the industry, this is debatable, but I would agree with Yeah, you. that's true. But it looks a lot nicer, doesn't it? <laughs> it looks very squished here, <laughs> in my opinion. But uh, yeah, exactly. So, okay, we have everything separated here, but now we don't see anything here. What should we do? And very easy solution would be to import the whole coin item component here from, and, oh, sorry, we'll go here and um, go source because that's where our code is uh, stored, then in components and coin item. We don't have to specify go to index.jsx uh, just because, uh, it knows that, okay, if it has index file inside, I will go there. If it doesn't have index, then it will crash because you need to then specify to go to another style, uh, another file. But if it has index, then you don't need to specify. You can leave it like that. And um, okay, requiring a known module. Oh, let's try to import the coin item here simply like that and reload. And here we go. We have our coin item back. All that's right. It. That's good. Here but we have it. We Lucas, still... Lucas, Lucas. Yes. Listen. Uh, how can you render more coin items? Do you still have to copy that that's 30 good... lines of code? That's a good question. Uh, 
you would think that I could just copy and paste multiple of these. And uh, that's not the best way as well. I mean, you theoretically could do that, but it would take, imagine listing 100 different cryptocurrencies and that's only one page and passing, that would be just insane. So what are we gonna do? First of all, we're gonna show you, you see that the data inside is the same and we need yeah, to what change. what if I want to see information about Ethereum? Exactly. So we're gonna teach you just that right now. Okay, thank you very <laughs> much, Lucas. Good thing, uh, not good thing, but a very, very common thing that you will use uh, during your React Native development is called props, uh, which we're gonna showcase just now. So how props work? Okay, right now I can, uh, I import a coin item and I can say, I want to pass to this uh, index file. I want to pass some data. So it could have, but I want to pass it from this screen. So, okay, that's possible. Let's call the data, okay, um, let's say name. And we call it name and we will give name Lucas. And, but for the other, coin, we will game, give name uh, Vadim. So as you see, we keep the same key, but give different values. And how to retrieve that value here? Uh, well, it's quite, quite simple. Every time you uh, pass something there, uh, you can receive in here uh, in this fold, uh, file folder uh, props. And let's right now just console log uh, props. Okay, we saved it and let's go here. And let's, I'm not sure, should I should open uh, debugger or it's good enough here? No, here, here, I'm I'm mostly debugging here, Expo projects. It, it looks much better. Yeah, exactly. The only thing you can explain is uh, if you don't see these logs here, you need to select your device yeah. from the, yeah. from here. Because you it's, can go uh, to metro log. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. That's a very good point because usually by default, a metro bundler is selected. So just select the device you're running on. So device iPhone 11 in this case. And as, as you can see, we have two objects. Uh, let me go back. Uh, we have, we are importing two objects here. That's good. We have two objects here. One of their names is Lucas and the other name is Vadim just like we're sending here. And I imported Lucas first, Vadim second. We are easily getting all that data here. That's cool. That's how what we're gonna use in order to display different kind of data here. Another cool feature that you can do, because even if I have props here, I would have to say dot and also name because that's how we called it here. If I called it here, let's say total, uh, then I would have to uh, access it with total here, but then it's also, I would have to change here uh, to total unless I want to pass another. So for example, I'm passing name and total and then something sad, <laughs> not sad. sad, but uh, I hope you get the point. And then, so let's say I'm going here and uh, props that name, which is kind of long. And you can, you have to, it's also a ESLint norm to destructure it. So yep. one way to destructure it uh, would be having const here and destructure it from props and pass different names that you're destructuring here, right? But that's usually... It's actually as well, your own preference. But what I do is usually I use this for when I have a lot of props. So yep. I have more and more and more. But if I have a few props as we have right now, we can simply do here the same thing and type in name. You write away the structure um, yeah. in the function declaration. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. And then let's just go here. And as far as you can see, it says Lucas here because I'm passing. Yeah, and here Lucas and Vadim. 
because I'm destructuring right away so I can access it right away. But um, yeah, so I showed you how to receive them. And now I don't want to actually go and uh, say, okay, this one name is Bitcoin. This is Ethereum and add more, more. So I think I will show you uh, the assets that we provided to you. And um, so I will actually need to find it myself where I have them. Yeah, I have them here. So usually that's going to be dummy data. And later on, if you like this tutorial. But yeah, this dummy data, um, um, you took it from directly real. from. Yeah, it's real data from yesterday's uh, market, uh, crypto market. But if you uh, if you like this tutorial, we'll implement it with real data from today later on. So in assets folder, I'll create another folder called data. And in here, I'll just paste my mm, data. So I have, and you should have two fol JSON files uh, called crypto and cryptocurrencies. Right now we're gonna use only cryptocurrencies. And as you can see, it's a long, long list of uh, cryptocurrencies, 50 of them actually, and they're yesterday's data. So there's a lot of them. Uh, and this is exactly the structure that you would receive if you yeah. query the CoinGecko API, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's this is the great part is that now we are working with dummy data, but after that, we just replace where we receive the data. And because we have the same structure, basically the same response, uh, we're not going to have to change anything in our code, right? Exactly. Yep. Uh, so right now, uh, we have that, and hopefully you have that as well. But as someone probably mentioned before already, how do we display multiple files, uh, multiple items? Uh, won't I, I? I could just go here and like pass the data from there, but somebody already gave a hint, and we are gonna use Flatlist. So let's import Flatlist here. Uh, let's say flatlist and flatlist is basically a list, but this is optimized list. Uh, and, uh, I think react native has just a list or something like that. Yeah. Which... It has a, it, it has a scroll view, which the flatlist yeah. is based on the scroll view, Yeah, but the flatlist helps you render. If you have a bunch of data, uh, and you know how to render each individual piece. In our case, we have a bunch of coin data and we know how to render each individual coin. Then you put yeah. them together and you will render a list of them that you can scroll. And you have a good thing about flat list is that it is uh, optimized. Yeah. So if you just do it yourself with, with um, coins.map, uh, then it's going to work, it's going to look good. But once you get to hundreds of coins to be rendered, then your, your uh, do-it-yourself solution will, um, will be very sloppy and uh, slow. But the flat list is very smart on what to render, when to render, and how to render. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And if you keep it according to the best standards, it's very performant as well. Uh, that's a very good introduction to the flat list. Thank you, Vadim. And uh, yeah, that's actually what you usually use in most of the applications that you build, to be honest. And uh, you receive two required fields. One of them is data, uh, which is what are we going to pass, uh, the whole cryptocurrencies, but we need to import them. But I will... Okay, let's call it the full name crypto uh, currencies. Hopefully, I didn't mess up the name. And let's import it from source. Uh, no, it's not in source. It's in assets. Yeah, in assets, data, and cryptocurrencies. Uh, and let's pass pass it the cryptocurrencies JSON list. And there's one more field because okay, it's received uh, the data flat list, but how he doesn't know how to render it. So we need to give 
some kind of uh, instructions how to render each item. So we pass render item. Uh, we simply, so from here, we have to destructure the item itself, just like that. Uh, have what curly braces around it. And then we can uh, have an arrow function and pass coin item, just like that. And also, as you remember, we said, let's give it uh, any kind of name. Let's, so let's say, let's call it market coin. Just to have it a bit differently. And let's pass that item as market coin. That's actually it. So the render function, as I understand, is a function that is, that is going to be called for every individual um, item in your yeah. huge array of cryptocurrencies. Yeah. And the item will be the data about that specific item. For example, the data about Bitcoin, only exactly. that object, right? Exactly. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, also, there is sometimes there is one more field that is required, which is key extractor, but uh, it's not, as Vadim said yesterday, it's not required as usually because it tries to take the ID, which we have here. All of them have different IDs. And if, the, uh, if it has ID, then it will not require uh, key yeah, extractor. it automatically tries to get the ID as a yeah. key because whenever you render huge list in React Native, you need to provide a key to the to each individual items, and the flat list will automatically uh, set the ID or the key. If you also have key field in your objects, it will also automatically take it. If you don't, yes. like you need to provide. How do you want to calculate the key for every item? Exactly. That's a very good explanation. And yes, so as you see, we have for each... Uh, oh my God, yeah. A lot Here of bitcoins. <laughs> for each uh, cryptocurrency, we have something displayed. But as you can see, that's all the same. So that's what we're going to do here right now. And so as we see, we pass market coin from here, right? Uh, we go to coin item uh, that we created here. So index. Lucas, and... don't don't freak out. I'm gonna leave you for one minute. Okay, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> and let's just pass market coin. And um, yeah, and now we we had destructured it. So let's say just console log it. Let's console log market coin and let's go here. You see, we are getting that market coin. That's good. That's very good. Here's the ID. Here's the image and bunch of other data that we're gonna use right now. So, but as I uh, explained before, if it's a, a lot of data, uh, it will be, first of all, you would have to destructure this market coin in here. So the better way to do it would be to have a new const, say uh, the structure from market coin, Mm, let's have some yep space and in here we can get every data that we need so first of all uh, we can see okay what does it have uh da, 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 da. a lot a lot of data but what we need from here also probably uh, an easier way would be just to go to your uh, data that you have and see uh, what it has here because here, everything is structured a lot better. So for example, I see I have name and I need name, which is what I'm going to take. What else? Uh, we also need a current price here. Let's see. OK, it has current price. Let's copy this. We will need this. What else? What else? Uh, we need a market. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we need market rating. Let's see if we have something like that. Here we have market cap rank. That's very good. Uh, also, what else? What else? Uh, we need a uh, change uh, in the percentage. And usually you show in this screen in price trackers, 24 hour change. So let's see if we, here we go. Price change 24 hour, but that's price itself. So we have percentage here. Let's take okay. percentage because we need to display percentage. Uh, what else? What else do we need? 
Mm, we need ticker. Let's see if they have a ticker. It's Maybe called symbol. symbol. Yeah, it's called symbol, but they do have it. That's good. And what else? What else? Uh, market cap I have. No, I need market cap uh, value. So let's see. Here it is, market cap. And as you can see, this list got really, really long. What, uh, one way would be to press Option Shift F and it will fix it or just put it everything like that. So I could easily just scroll up. I can see everything here. I don't need to scroll to the side. I can see easily everything here. And now uh, we can start passing the data. Oh, also, I forgot one more thing. We need an image. Let's see how to get an image. Or just simple image. And the, the data is coming with uh, a URL to an image, right? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. It's coming That's here. Convenient. Very, very good. And let's start from the image. I mean, that's the first one. Let's do it. Um, okay. Let's you can go. close the sidebar to, to have more space. I think that yep. would be uh, easier to see for everybody. Zapis, boot it, boot it, boot it, Zapis. Okay, so we pass image and voila, we have different images for uh, cryptocurrencies. That's one step closer. Uh, what else? Oh, so, it's already looking so dope. Yeah, it already like looks a lot images. Of... All right. That's the only thing you need. Uh, else, okay, what else? We need to pass name and we have here called name. So we are just putting curly braces and call name, save it. Here we have different names. Very good, very good. Let's follow. Okay, we have a rank. How, let's see how it's called, market cap rank. We copy it, delete this one, and just paste market cap rank. And All it's right. one, two, three, four, five, perfect. Till 50 should be, yep, till 50, very good. What else, a symbol. So symbol, uh, let's do, symbol but you see the symbol here is lowercase and yep. we need it uppercase so very easy is to write two uppercase and that's it and you could do the same to lowercase if you need if it was uppercase but you need lowercase i wish so, uh, javascript had a to capitalize uh, method because we don't you'd have to implement it yourself to have only the first letter capital okay Okay, uh, what else? Um, so now percentage, let's see how it's called because I remember price change percentage 24. That's a long name. Uh, let's give it, uh -huh. oh, sorry. And we have price change percentage, but it's too big. We don't need it to be so long. We need, first of all, at the end, we need percentage sign. So we just go out of the braces and put percentage so first step first step done uh, do we need a space there to be honest i'm not sure i don't think uh that will change later if we need but this is too too long we don't need to see that many yeah there numbers. are a lot of digits right yeah so the easy one the solution would be to write to fixed and mm -hmm. it will fix uh so you can pass whatever number you want here three then it will have three decimals after. If you have four, it will have four decimals, but mm -hmm. we need only two. So that's what we're gonna do. Perfect. It's shaping up. That's, that's easy. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, what else? So the most important problem, one of the most important things is current price. Uh, so we just current price as it's named here, current price, save it. And yep, that's good. Ethereum yesterday, it was, 4,500, everything is perfect. But also uh, what usually uh, cryptocurrency trackers do is also have two decimals after, oh no, sorry, not here, two decimals after current price, always. So, but actually we need it only here. So let's leave it like that. It's gonna good put good for now, but because if we put two decimals, then it will, for example, this one will show ninety seven. Mm -hmm. But uh, how does 
I think we need to see here more. It's because it's a small cryptocurrency. Sometimes it's going to be even smaller. Look at yeah, Shiba yeah, yeah, Shiba Inu so, and stuff like that. Let's leave it like that for now. Yeah, let's leave it like that for now. And last thing is market cap. Mm -hmm. And we need those M cap called and just paste market cap. And the market cap here is just huge. But and it is possible to probably fix it somehow easy but that's the problem uh coin gecko re gives you the data uh, market cap data just the raw number no mm -hmm. it, it doesn't like beautify it so i'm not even sure what should be our approach here because it messes up everything because mm -hmm. of uh, the mm -hmm. auto margin if we... you, you you can implement a simple function here like uh, mar to beautify it and you just check if it's more than trillions then you just display with t if it's more than billions you display with yep. oh but yeah, here yeah. oh yeah it's the market cap we're talking about yeah it is possible yeah we uh, should we right now spend some time doing this or you can implement a very back. basic version of this okay. function yeah just so first of all, uh, cont, uh, let's say, I don't know how beautiful, beautify probably would be good, yeah. uh, market cap or normalize. Market cap, uh, have uh, arrow function. Uh, or we okay, can right away calculate it here if you want. It depends. What do you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Continue, continue. Uh, so we need uh, a market cap uh, as a variable. Also, let's call it here, uh, market cap, and normalize market cap, and pass a market cap. Mm -hmm. And for now, let's just return n to see. OK, uh, we can see that here. Um, OK, what's next? So first of all, we'll, let's just do a very simple if market cap. No, not this. We could do that. But if market cap equals, how many zeros does a trillion have? One. Um, what do you mean? How many zeros? Uh, one for, for what? One trillion has. One trillion? Uh, one million is six, then nine, yeah. then um, twelve. But one, you do you know? Can, can you can you write some numbers there? I'm Where? gonna show you a cool trick. Here. Yes. Um, can you write one with twelve zeros? Okay. The trick is <laughs> you can format your numbers with underscore, so you can write one underscore zero 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 underscore zero zero zero. And this will be like yes, this? like this, yeah. And in JavaScript, this will, and you can put after every three zeros one underscore, and it's going to be easier for you to see if it's a million, a billion. That's uh, I didn't know this. That's very so nice. it's one thousand, one yeah. million, one billion, one trillion. Yeah, that's really nice. Okay, if it's uh, market cap is bigger than that, then let's return for now one. Okay, it does work so. We can just return one. Um, I think you can return market cap divided by this number. Yeah. Um, but then it's again also maybe... with math.floor because this will be, you divide by this number directly, market cap divided yeah. by this yeah. number, and everything will be in the math.floor because yeah. dividing 1.4 trillions by 1 trillion will be 1.4. So that's why we need only the one or something like this. And, and uh, you want a plus T or something we, like this. So we need string. to wrap it in uh, yep. uh, these little thingies uh, under the escape. Then Backticks. say that, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> then say that this is um, JavaScript operation. JavaScript, yeah. And this is just a simple. Uh, the um, string under I can put whatever here I want and it will be displayed if it's yeah more so that's uh, that good 
uh, what we could also, mm, yeah, we can leave it like that. Should we, but we need to implement more of them. So else, add for billions as well. Else, uh, but if we're returning, it's better to do just if. Okay, and let's delete a few zeros, then let's copy. Oh, sorry. And then again, if... You can copy paste the whole thing because it's going to be easier for you. Yeah, like this. What about login authentication part three? Do you finish it? No, I do not have time at the moment to work on it, but I planned uh, the next video, what's gonna be there. I want to um, uh, teach you how to work with React uh, form hook, uh, and this will allow you to manage um, validation of uh, forms. So I think the, our authentication series is a perfect uh, playground to teach React form hook, because I was teaching this in the course, and I thought that um, I can do a video on YouTube as well regarding this. It's a really nice <laughs> library, but it's a bit different than React JS, so that's why it needs a separate tutorial. So um, it's coming. Like I know <coughs> that a lot of people are waiting for the authentication guide. Uh, but these these weeks, I'm super busy with a course. I'm working day and night on um, on recording and preparing the course. Yeah. So actually, that's one of the problems that we come uh, come up with by having like two columns and with auto margining again, because the margins will be very different everywhere. Oh, but uh, on the last column, you can uh, align everything to the right. And you see they just align Content align items, I think, or items, yeah, might be. And uh, flex end, flex end, yeah. It's, yep, let's see. Uh, does it look better right now? Yeah, I think it looks like it should, like it's yeah, supposed think, to look. Yeah, it's a bit strange here. The, the, do I have some? Oh, yeah, because it's a simple te uh, text, and the text I think has some uh, margin on the right yes it does uh, which means we will change it here and as we only need it to be white so we're gonna pass in line uh, yep. just like that and uh, you can pass styles like that in line as well but imagine pa uh, adding that many styles it will start looking pretty bad so yeah, yeah. it usually when it's something very simple and uh, this is a perfect case for that okay so we kind of roughed around these uh market cap numbers uh there definitely is a better solution to do it and this function can be fixed tweaked but and if we are gonna do more uh video series on this i will make sure to tweak this function to showcase actual real numbers uh, with uh, some after co uh, comma and stuff like that. But for now, that's, I think that's yeah, I think everything that we need. And uh, hmm, is there anything else that we need for the items? I don't think, I think we have all uh, the... I think uh, the color of the um, percentage yeah, change. Exactly. So. That's uh, uh, first of all, let's take care of the name of the percentage change. So, you mean um, the icon should be different? Yeah, if, if the percentage change is positive, it should look yes. like a triangle with yeah. pointing up and otherwise pointing down, right? Exactly, that's okay. uh, that's exactly what I need. And um, in order to achieve that, uh, we are Actually, what I'm thinking to do is to create, uh, instead of uh, actually checking, because I would need to check here, I would need to check here, and, and I color. would also need to check here. So that's very 
repetitive and we need to check for the same thing every time. So what we could do is mm, something like const create a new var variable, say uh, a percentage, um, how to call it, percentage color, let's say like that, and uh, do a simple if price change per 24 hours percentage is uh, lower than zero, that means it's a minus because this one will return as uh, minus two minus something. That means it's red and it's mm -hmm. no, no, not good. And I have my colors uh, here, the ones that look good, that because simple red is too red for me. <laughs> And yeah, and else if uh, also it's complaining about brackets, so let's use these. And right now also this. So also one thing, uh, if uh, we, oh, we, I didn't add this question mark here. So this question mark means, uh, so basically if percentage is lower than zero, then display this, else display this, and else will be green uh, here. And let's put it here. Mm, okay, we have percentage color. That's good. We can, can go you close the tab. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. I will need to get no used worries. to this. <laughs> and yeah, we can do that very easily. So let's go here and say um, just pass percentage color. And voila, we see the Yay, color. Hey, we have it. <laughs> Uh, there's one more thing that we need here and we need to show the percentage in that color as well. The text and, itself, right? Yeah, the text itself. And actually we don't need this text style because we, we only pass... think it contains is the color that you need to override, yeah. right? Yeah. So I think I'm going to be lazy and why don't I... you pass here percentage color? Uh, exactly. I just passed percentage color. I don't no, need as a white. Color. Why yeah. I thought about uh, that? I need white. Yeah, and also it should be. No, no, no. Um, I think you need the co yeah color. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly like that. Uh, and here it is. It's in color. Everything is in color. That's that's good. We all want to see the only green. <laughs> exactly. Uh, that's very very true. And also. It's very good because we're going to use the icon from the same and design. Mm -hmm. We can just change the name and we can have a similar approach to this, but because we're changing the name only one place, uh, so we can just do it in line here. So mm -hmm. as well, if price uh, change percentage per 24 hours is lower than zero, we display this color. Not the color, he's, he's the name. Oh, of this that. name. Sorry, yeah. And else we display other names. So if I'm correct, this one was, uh, let's see here, carrot down. Carrot Number one, down. I can guess it's carrot up. Exactly. <laughs> okay, I'm good at this. And I'm voila. getting there. Yes, and now the green items have a carrot up pointing yeah. and the red one have down. Okay. Exactly. That looks amazing. Yeah, it's already shaping up pretty well. So now we have uh, different data everywhere. And now um, for your perfectionist eye, if you change the color of the border bottom there uh, to the one that you initially wanted to, to do, exactly. I think I it will totally look totally forgot about it. <laughs> and where it, I need to find the color that I, I think down. Gainsborough uh, is a very, very light uh, color. Uh, Let's see. Let's go to the. I can search it for you, but border bottom two eight two eight two eight. If you want exactly your color. <laughs> okay, so then uh, we are gonna put it in coin container and yeah, it should so be right somewhere. Great and okay. I had to wait, wait, wait. Two eight two eight two eight. Yeah, and it's probably hard to see on the stream. But in real life, it looks really good. So I'm not sure what to leave. Uh, so uh, leave, leave it like this because in 
and then we can even give people ability to um, um, so. scan the QR code and look at the application on their smartphone. Okay, yeah. So then uh, I'll leave this one. And that's actually it for displaying uh, the item, one item. That's awesome. So here we rendered one item. We worked on that. After that, we introduced um, state and props. I mean props with our state. Uh, to send the data about the coin that we want to render. Uh, and after that, we put everything into a flat list to render all of them from our dummy data. And now what's the next step, Lucas? So there is one thing that I would like to do before taking a short break. Okay. <laughs> is uh, actually we need to kind of clean up because the, it's good to keep app.js file pretty clean all the time. And we have here flat list. Uh, so what we could do, we could create a in source, we could create another folder called screens, which will contain every screen in our application. Uh, press enter. And also let's create another folder that for this flat list. And we are going to call it home screen because that's the screen that you're going to see when open, when you open the application, at least for now. And okay. also, as I said, like basically always and create index JSX. And this is not going to be very hard. Uh, let's import real quick everything that we need. Mm -hmm. And then uh, const home screen equals our function, then export default home screen. Perfect. And also let's return something from here. Will you implement the graph for every coin in the flat list? Uh, let's everyone ask Lucas, Lucas, please, will you implement the graph for the every coin in the flat list? I really want to. <laughs> I'm very <laughs> excited for uh, expanding on this application. And there's a lot of ideas that I have that we could implement. I'm not sure if I should spoil them right away or not. <laughs> But, but yeah, like today we are gonna get there. So yeah, so we're gonna we, get after let's... Lucas uh, does the refactoring that he's doing right now. We will move to the details page, and there we will implement the details about a coin that will include uh, a chart library uh, displaying the graph of the coin price, exactly. which is awesome because um, Lucas used another library uh, that I used to work with. Um, uh, charts, and I think the library that Lucas uses it looks much better, and uh, it has so many possibilities to to adjust that it, it's really really dope. Yeah, and yeah, I also I, I'm I, interested in how to to work with that. I liked it as well a lot. So easy step, just take this flat list, cut it from here, go to home screen, paste it here, maybe clean up with that little handy shortcut, and also kind of need to import everything that we need here. Of course, import paths will change. So we're going to fix that there. there. We also need their uh, React Native uh, flat list, uh, but we don't need these two. So let's delete it quickly. Save uh, what else? Um, actually, that's it. Right now, let's quickly. So coin item is not coming from here. Uh, let's adjust it a little bit. Uh, here, uh, we need to do another one. Go to components slash con item. And as you remember, we don't need to do slash index because we created index. Uh, and cryptocurrencies will go uh, hmm, like that. One more and one more. Then we can access assets, data, and cryptocurrencies. I think that's that. And also uh, here, we need to import home screen. So import home screen and from uh, this, no, 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 this, this uh, source slash screen slash home screen and just add it here simply home screen close. Voila. 
everything should work. And it's and back it's... to the web where it was, right? Yep, exactly. Yeah, but and the good thing clean. right now is it lives in a separate um, screen in a separate component that we can easily move around where we need it. And it's going to be very handy when we introduce navigation later in this video. Exactly. So while uh, Lucas is going to get back very soon, uh, yep. for everyone who is uh, just joining, uh, let me introduce you what we are building today. So if I can go to the first slide. Yeah, if you're just joining, hi, welcome. Uh, today we are building a crypto price tracker with React Native. And this is a step-by-step -step, uh, tutorial where we show you how you can do it as well with, um, with React Native to build this crypto uh, price tracker, which is very similar to applications that you probably already know, like CoinMarketCap or CoinGecko or any other application that uh, renders and displays uh, data about cryptocurrencies, including price and so on. So um, in this tutorial, we are going to focus on two main screens of this application. And this is the home screen that will display a long list of uh, cryptocurrencies with, with a little details about each of them, like name, the ticker, uh, the current price, and also the total market cap. Uh, this is already done. We already implemented this um, in the beginning of this live stream. And sorry, and the next uh, step is going to be rendering uh, the details page of one specific coin. And here we're going to get into more details about uh, what we are showing to, uh, to, the, to the user. Uh, we're going to display more information that we can get. Uh, we're also going to include the graph, um, the graph that you can see here on the screen. Uh, and yeah, like this is the part that I'm mostly excited about is this graph and how we will be able to interact with it. So um, yeah, if you're jo just joining, uh, sit back, you can watch. And um, the live stream is going to be published on the channel. So you will will be able to go through it and implement it yourself during this weekend, because what else you could do during the weekend? Uh, all right, so what's the next step, Lucas? So um, the next step is, I'm not sure if you said, but details page for every cryptocurrency in the list. And as it's going to be another screen, because if we click, we will navigate to it, and we have a conveniently screens folder, we can create another folder called, um, how to call it, let's say coin details screen or, or, or called coin detailed screen. We'll be using any API to get cryptocurrencies. Uh, we got the dummy data from the CoinGecko API, which is a free API. And by the way, you can integrate with it uh, easily. And yeah, we're gonna use the data from the API, but we are not going to query directly. I don't know, maybe we will manage until then. If we have time at the end, we will just swap where we are getting the data because the structure of the data is from the API, so. Yes. Or if you enjoy the stream in the next uh, episode. As you can see, Lucas is very excited to, to continue this build, so. Yeah. Uh, now is the time to write in the comments down below. Like, come on, Lucas, we need part two and part three and so on, as you yes. were <laughs> doing with the, um, the signal. <laughs> I, I think I think I did already f seven or eight episodes, and at oh, every wow. episode, like, Vadim, next episode, like, come on, let's do it. I know that everyone is hungry for learning more. Nice, that is very nice. It's good. So very everyone, happy. go in the comments and write, Lucas, we need the next episode. <laughs> Then, yeah, we'll have yeah, more. Yeah, people already require part five. <laughs> that's, uh, that's nice. Uh, OK, so to continue, we clean up a little bit the tabs. Um, also, in order for me not to, for, because actually I didn't implement it, the navigation yet, I'll just uh, display this uh, coin detailed screen here and on detail screen, but I'm not gonna import it because I will get an error because I don't have anything here uh, yet constructed, uh, the bare minimum things that Vadim was talking about. And 
Well, let's export it, coin detailed screen. Okay. That. Export uh, default coin detail screen. And let's return for now. Also, let's import uh, React Native because we'll need it. And let's say view and a text a ROM React Native. Okay, some spaces to <laughs> look nice. And um, yeah, and let's return a uh, view, a simple view with a simple text saying detailed screen to see if it's loading. And here we can easily replace that one with this one. Voila. Okay, we don't see that text because it's uh, dark, but let's do this color white. And here we have it. That's very good. Let's go, Lucas. Let's continue. Uh, so right now, the detail page. Let's turn on design for the detail page uh, real quick. Uh, hmm. First things first is we need to display at the top uh, the um, basically navigation bar kind of with the possibility to go back with the symbol of the cryptocurrency, its rank, and later, if you like it, a uh, profile screen <laughs> <laughs> that you can go to a profile. So what we are going to do, um, first things first, we can, instead of, um, we can find an icon. That's important. We can need an icon to go back. But that bar, isn't it part of a navigation? Um, it's uh, the navigation. Uh, I like to do it here. OK. I don't, I'm, I don't know. Like, it's not in a lot of places. Because in the whole application, we will need a head bar in only one place. So but it's going to uh... be very easy to create it like that and just access okay. it. And it's very custom, you see, also, because I need a uh, different data in the header that you can probably pass. Yeah, I know. I later actually... we can refactor this, I think. Yeah, yeah, well. yeah. I think you can do it now here. And, mm -hmm. and which one? I like this one. I'm not sure what's the difference between this, this, and this. But designers know. They, it says sharp. That means it's sharp. It's the angle. <laughs> OK. The angle that um, it makes when it makes a shadow, you know, the sun and position. <laughs> so we need it white. Uh, probably we need it a little bit bigger. That would be nice. And the size, as you know, I have it written down because I know what. Uh, yeah. So this is going to be the size uh, 30. And uh, so far, it's good. Now we need to display also the image of Bitcoin. So let's not Bitcoin, but the actual data. So image, uh, also the two important image parts are, let's start like normal person from source. Uh, let's find a- uh, Where will you get the data from? You mean here? Yep. On this right page. now, I'm I'm going to just a uh, random data display. Just random, or you can import it from because you prepare, no? Uh, exactly. It's gonna be easier because we already yeah. know how to to work yeah. with data. And... I can just do that. So let's uh, import. Where is it? Here, cryptocurrency. That's a very good notice. I uh, can just simply import it. Call it, um, I don't know, crypto detail or crypt, no, oh, I don't know, coin. <laughs> <laughs> That's the hardest part, thinking of a name. Uh, oh, not Yeah, more. especially in a live stream when everyone is watching and you cannot come up with a normal name, yeah. <laughs> everything in your head is like, <laughs> Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, assets, data, and crypto. Okay, I have it here uh, right now. So 
as I I will do. Some and Bitcoin, of this, can you show us a bit how how it looks like the yes. data? Is, is yes. it similar to how it no. looks? No. It's the, actually it's very different to be honest. It has a lot more data. Uh, it has like also the ID symbol name. It has description even about. As I see here, it doesn't have one image. It has three images, yeah. right? It has three images. It has a small icon that we will use. It has a large one, and I uh, even bigger, quit, something. I guess. Like some, yeah, and and also it has a object called market data, mm -hmm. which has a lot of market data. So I can get get current price, and also in Coin Gecko you can select and get price in different. In what? Currency, what currency like, you want okay. yeah you can get in all of them which uh, then this file is just enormous <laughs> so all-time high all-time high change percentage all-time high date all-time low all-time low <laughs> change like there's a lot of data in there's even more here i'm not sure how much of it we're gonna able to use it here but i thought this is fun data that you can even play if around yeah. Your, yeah play around with and there's prices here so you can also select uh, what prices you want. So I selected here 24 hours prices each hour. Hourly 24. It's basically the standard in every coin tracker. Okay. Uh, also later, if you like this tutorial, we can implement multiple different. <laughs> uh, and then the graph looks really good. And How many so, likes should this video get uh, for that? I'm not sure. Two. I just need one person to say do this. <laughs> one <second> person. <laughs> Lucas, please, can you do the second? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, and yeah, and some tickers. So we yeah, that's are perfect. taking Bitcoin, target USD, last price, and coin ID. But um, enough about that. So let's create const and the structure from coin. Not coin, coin, not, oh, okay, coin, perfect. And as I remember, we need image, but uh, if you see image has multiple different. Um, it's an little, object with three yeah, keys, yeah. Exactly. So we have to destructure it even more. What we can do is do uh, pre uh, type double dots, another curly braces, and then say whatever one of these we need, but we need small mm -hmm. and we'll take it so like that just like that and we can pass it here small but let's not forget we need some styles uh, and let's give um width of for now 15 and height let's not forget as well 15. we definitely need it bigger <laughs> maybe 30. All right. I think this this for now will be good. We can change it later uh, according to how I think on the design as I look here, it it's a bit smaller. So let's make it twenty five. It's twenty five. <laughs> I was looking in uh, in the code. Yeah, it's twenty five. Twenty five. Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, and now we need text, of course, because we need to display the name. Let's simply. Uh, also, we need to take the name from here. Let's see, because I don't remember. So, oh, it's just, just simple uh, name. Let's pass it here, name. And for now, let's give it a simple style of color white. Okay, Bitcoin, we do see that. What else, what else? We have um, market cap. So let me uh, open it here. And the uh, market cap is named to, to, to market data, not market cap, but I mean uh, the rank of market cap. So it's a market data, right? Yeah, market data, market cap rank. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's simply say market data, double dot, and then market cap rank and display it here. Uh, okay, perfect. We also need to display a hashtag there. Uh, that's good. But uh, this one is getting kind of out of hand already. So I'm going to do the trick and that's going to be easier for me. What else do we need? We need, uh, that's it. We need actually one more icon. 
and um, we can look for uh, that item here. Mm -hmm. I'll prepare it for like for the future. Not sure if we're gonna use it, but we'll see. Mm, which one? oh this one? Yeah, I think it was this one. Uh, but we don't need to import it again. We can just say we need those evil icons. And then uh, something very similar to this. Let's say evil icons. And then what was the name? Name was user. Um, so the size should be, I think, I think it's about that, about right. Uh, yeah. Um, and color white. Yes, uh, that's good. But as you see, all of the data is like in the same column. In the same column, which means we need to separate it all. And uh, one one solution would be to first of all, let's say here style, and then uh, oh, and then flex direction row. And we have them all in a row. The, the thing, we don't need the name here, actually, as, as I can see. We need a symbol here. We will need a name as well, so we can just keep it. And symbol also to uppercase. Yes, this one. Mm, yeah, so we have um, this everything in a flex direction, which makes them in a row. And we can continue further, uh, the first icon. The first icon, I think we can give some already padding some uh, here on, uh, yeah, I think 10 should be uh, enough in my opinion. Uh, also mm -hmm. we, yes? And then you want to, to spread them apart because yeah, they're also, very cluttered. Yeah, they're cluttered, but also they are not uh, aligned correctly. So I will just do align items and center. And as you can see, this is getting out of hand really fast. So let's create a styles folder, styles file. Mm, and import. File sheet from React Native and then const styles equals style sheet dot create and like that. And call it the uh, header container. Perfect. Let's put all this in there. Let's import here, import styles, import styles from uh, styles, and then just pass here styles.header container. Mm -hmm. And let's go here. Let's clean up a little bit. And um, did I made some mis oh I didn't export it that's that's what I'll export default styles that well, was uh, another bug that I could introduce in uh, the squid game yeah. challenge exactly that's true uh, um what, so yeah right now we have them aligned everything looks pretty nice but they're cluttered like big time so <laughs> oh but the thing is that we need these three to be in the middle, but only these two to be like set apart. So we will wrap it in a view. Uh, and we will wrap these, this, these three values um, in a simple view, which, uh, which still has to be flex direction row because we don't need them to be in column. And because they are in a new view, they are displayed here in a column. Because what this flex direction from here does, it just takes this one, uh, the whole view, and this one, and displays them like they are displayed. But this new view overrides 
and it cannot be in a row here. So I'm not sure if it's very, uh, uh, if I explained it well, but that's why we need to actually have all of these items inside this view in a row as well. But which means that we need to align them again mm -hmm. uh, in center. You see, I'm not sure if it was very, uh, no, so... I think it's clear. Like you needed to group them because in the next step you want to spread apart, but to keep three items in the same uh, group. Yes. And whenever you add a new view, that view by default doesn't have any styles, and yes. by default the flex direction is column. So exactly. every time you add a new view, you if you need to render it in a row, you add the flex direction there. Exactly. So. As well, uh, I'll create a style for this one and con uh, name it ticker container. Okay, and go here, create here as well, ticker container and paste everything here. Well, not everything, everything, but okay. And also, okay, so we have them here, but nothing changed from the previous, uh, like we had previously. So we can, we just do justify content, which will, we can select how do we want them to justify? Should they all be in the center? Should they be at the end? Should they be a uh, flex start at the start? Should they, they have some space around? So they would be like one here, one here, one something like that. But actually we need space between all of them. And if we save, we do have space between all of them each each container in here has its own space. And okay, this is shaping up pretty uh, pretty nicely right now. And, uh, but we need kind of to add some styles to these three because they are first of all cluttered, second of all, don't have any styles whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, for the uh, Bitcoin ticker, let's say, um, font weight and make it bold. Yeah, that's already nice. And add some horizontal margin because we need to add space on both sides of the Bitcoin. So that's horizontal. And if I would say vertical, it would add space here and here. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, that's uh, that's looking better. I think I would like this Bitcoin to have a little bit uh, be bigger font size because, yeah, it's now we're oh, talking. yeah, uh, <laughs> it's just a small thing, but it looks better, yeah, exactly. And because it's getting very big, let's just call, uh, create another style and call it styles. Um, her title uh, and have it here uh, ticker title okay perfect nothing changed everything is the same um, and on this little button um, uh, I mean uh, hashtag we need some stage uh, changes as well First of all, we also, if I see correctly here, we kind of need to make it bold to uh, font weight and bold. Yes, uh, and also increase its size, but a little bit less than uh, the Bitcoin ticker. So let's say 15. That increased it actually by one because I think the default is 14. So uh, yeah, I think it's 14. It didn't increase too much. And uh, Right now, we need to wrap it around the view again in order to add some styles there. You mean the, the position, the rank? You want to wrap it in a view yes. to add some styles, like a background, I don't know. Exactly, yes. Actually, I don't know how do you As we saw here. talk so much. My throat is already getting... I hope I hope it's not that visible on the stream that my voice is drink threatened. water stay hydrated exactly okay let's continue um yeah so we need some styles and first things first we have to give background color which 
and my nodes is uh, 585858, the same as we had there. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to give some, actually, I see that we already can create a styles object in our styles file <laughs> yeah. because it's going to get out of hands very fast and call it um, rank container. Yeah, rank container. Perfect. And styles. Uh, rank. And probably easier will be just to copy the styles from your coin component. Yeah, but that's not going to be a lot <clears throat> a lot of them, I think. Yeah. So I just quickly, OK, uh, padding. So in here, I see that we do need some um, padding horizontal uh, as well, but it's should, uh, it should be five, but also, I mean, we need padding uh, vertical mm -hmm. because it's a little bit different, this one. And I don't want to add it too much, so I'll add two. Uh, that's good. But we need to add also border uh, radius. Let's set it five. Okay, it's shaping up a lot, a lot. Everything better. It looks better with a border radius. Exactly. And I think, uh, is it? Yeah, it's aligned in the center, I think. Yeah, 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 it is. That's it. We have our header. That's good. Oh, nice. Uh, so uh, right now, let's continue. And so first of all, because this is a header, I'm not sure, should I show and export it to a different component or leave it like that? You can leave it like this. OK. Or you can export it if because you it, don't it, want to, to have a lot of code here ugly, to be confusing. Yeah. Usually when I have like different parts in the same page, I don't export it to the components, but I export it to a separate file in the folder of my screen. So in the coin details um, folder, I can have a file name header. Because yeah, it's that's, only yeah, used yeah. here. Yeah, exactly. That's what I would do. But as well, I would create like a uh, simple, so component, components, folder in here so I could know that, okay, these are the components that I'm going to use in coin details mm -hmm. uh, page. I, it's, it looks, I don't know, easier. You to can understand. right away go with a file here. Yep. Yep. That's true. Okay. Let's do just that actually. Yeah. Yeah. For, for others, you can still keep going with the structure where every component has a folder and inside that you can add the index file, but I think for, for Lucas not to go, um, crazy with the folders there, it's going to be easier if he just um, declares the component as a file in that components folder. Yes. Uh, coin detail header. Oh, sorry. Header. OK, just like that. Uh -huh. Export default coin detail header. That's perfect. Let's return. Uh, some data and we need to take this chunk and crop it, put it in here, fix it a little bit. Mm, also import all of this uh, in here. That's uh, how you like the same analogy of building up with Legos. Uh, it, it, first of all, the code will look a lot cleaner, which is yep. a big plus. And second of all, it will be, yeah, it will, yeah, you can it, it can it. be reusable. Yeah. For right. example, right now you can add here, but if you want, like later want to add another uh, screen with the same header, then you can easily import the same header twice and don't have to copy paste code uh, from here and there. Exactly. So we have our header uh, almost good. We just need to import styles. I think that, about the styles, yeah. That I actually, I just move uh, my styles uh, from there to uh, this folder. So I had styles in this coin detailed screen, yes. but I just moved it to components. Um, okay. Because that's how it, actually I would do. I would create another folder and have in that folder these two files. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I will keep for this one probably, or should I do it like? No. Okay, go with a folder. If yes. I feel like you, <laughs> you cannot look at this. 
coin detail header. That's perfect. And then we can rename this to simple like index. Once you learn and um, get obsessed with writing clean code, you just cannot go back. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, it's very hard to... Yeah, and now it looks amazing. It's in components. We see that we have coin detail header and it has its own styles and its own uh, index file, which is... Yeah, just... and it doesn't mess up the other code that you have. Yes, exactly. So now the only thing that we need to do is import well not exactly the only but coin detailed header from uh, components slash coin detail header added here coin detail header uh, like that and also uh, if you remember we learned about uh, uh, props so we do need to send some props there oh uh, we do Yes, we do. And uh, the props Yeah, are... because in the coin details header right now, you do not have a data. You don't know what to render, right? Exactly. So uh, you need to send uh, this data from the place where you know it. And in our case, is the coin details screen. Because yes. here we have our coin. And we were just going to pass down to the children component, co component coin detail header. Um, yeah. The and image we will, and... Yeah, exactly. We will pass multiple uh, props. So you can see how that works. And usually it's very often that the name, uh, the key and the name is the same. I only uh, like change here. So you could see, yeah, I can do it like that. And it makes more sense to pass their image than just small. Small can yes. be anything can be small. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Anything can be small. <laughs> that should be written on t shirts. <laughs> okay. And that's an idea for um, merch. Uh, yeah. Actually, I don't have the merch, so I could, uh, I know, uh, advertise or anything can be small. <laughs> okay. Image. Um, image yeah but now we call uh, here it's called small but we need to call it image okay what's next we also passed name the name is same so we are not doing anything we also passed symbol mm -hmm. so let's take symbol here and last but not least we passed market cap rank which uh, has a bit different value so we're going to have to change it here as well. And um, why name is not used? Um, uh, probably you don't need it. Yeah, you, you said yes, that you're going to need symbol. name later exactly. on. Exactly. Sorry. And I think these are, the, yeah, that's the only thing that we need. So let's clean this up a little bit. And that's it. As you see it here, everything is completely the same. Nothing changed. But this folder looks so much cleaner and it's going to be a lot easier for your eyes to work because I don't have to like scroll through the whole page to get somewhere. And it's going to be a lot easier for me to work as well because, because yeah, it's for the it, same reasons. For the same reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wanted to think of it. And you don't have to pass the name there because you don't need the name. I mean, it's not wrong uh, if yeah, you pass exactly. it, but just to clip it, keep it clean, like yeah, extra exactly. data. Exactly. That's very true. So now we Shall have we look that, at the designs. Yeah, that's right now. That's what I'm doing. Actually, I'm looking at the designs and what else do we need? So we need a price, big price tag and a little small. Uh, that's why we use name. So above we will need small uh, name and yep. actually that's it. We can also display on the side the percentage of the day. Uh, oh, that's that, yeah, that looks good. That look, yeah, that would. Uh, make it look better a lot. Okay, so let's uh, start. First of all, let's add simple text and see where it, it is displayed. And you can already pass the name, I think. Uh, yeah, but it needs to be a white color. White, it, okay, it is displayed here. So we need, as we see, some padding here. 
let's give um, but I mean we will need it here because we will need for the whole component padding um, hmm. a padding of uh, 50 oh no no I can't give it to the whole component because this header is in that component that's uh, I think it's good to give to the page and then remove it from the coin details header if you have it there. Because uh, it, I have it, it's it, gonna, yeah. It's going to be easy for you if you just add this padding to the page and you forget That's... about this. Because if you keep adding multiple components down below, you should always remember to add this padding or margin. But if you add it to the page, you do it once. And that's it, you forget about it. That's actually a very good point. Let's just do exactly that, padding horizontal and 10. Well, voila, it's perfect. Um, okay, what else do we need? We need this Bitcoin. Probably we will have to kind of wrap it in one uh, as well uh, view because we will need to add some margins and stuff. Uh, so let's do that. And also here we can, uh, so we need current price. How do, let's see, how do we get current price? And I forget to close this. <laughs> Don't mm. worry. So current price, it's market data, current price, USD. Dot USD, yeah. That's a long way to go. So, and we also need to always destructure it, uh, but uh, we have market data uh, already destructured. So we need, uh, we need current price and just like that. And I think I think I, I wouldn't personally destructure far for like for USD. Yeah, I'd because keep it, current price. Yeah, it will look better, but uh, worse. But um, because you would just put USD and that doesn't make any sense what USD it is. So you would have to name it. Differently. Rename it and yeah. But the thing is that ESLint will complain if you do that. If you don't destructure all the way till the. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. I, I don't remember having this issue. Maybe, but yeah, like let, let, let's keep it like this, like current price and okay. So then current price and just with a simple dot, we can access uh the price and it's there. That's perfect. But we one need... second, Lucas, one second. I want to answer a question. Uh Havadim, what are you making today? So yeah, for everyone who is just joining, hi, welcome. Uh, today we are doing, let me see here, a crypto price tracker application. Uh, oh my God, it's so many things here. Yeah, crypto price tracking application, very similar to um, CoinMarketCap and CoinGecko application or any other application that displays data about cryptocurrencies. So we already have finished the homepage with a list of cryptocurrencies. And uh, now we are working on the details page that will display more information about one specific um, coin. And it will also include this cool graph that we can interact with. So yeah, that's what we're building today. That's what we are continuing to do. And let's get back to, to work. Yes, so yeah. Uh, but uh, okay, so we display the price, but we don't know what numbers are this. So first of all, let's add uh, USD because right now we are doing only for uh, with the USD uh, currency. And also it's, uh, it's common to display two numbers after the price all the time. Um, but I'm thinking, <laughs> no, let's leave it just like that. I mean, it will have two numbers from CoinGecko if it's not zeros after. So it doesn't make sense for me to add it there. I think so. I think this one uh, looks really uh, not really good, but good. We'll make it look really good. Um, so now, uh, what do we need? We need to make maybe change some uh, font size to fifteen, a little bit bigger. I think yes, and also, um, and I think that's it. That's mm, looks pretty good but we'll add some styles to the view uh, for the current price though we need to increase the font size very much i think uh, 30 and also we need to make it uh, bold 
Mm, well, and I think the numbers are so close to each other. So I want to add letter spacing of one, which will make them. Oh, that's nice. A little bit nicer for, for the This eye. is just to increase the space between letters, right? Yeah, between each letter. Yeah. And I think the bold is a bit too much. Maybe let's give it 600. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think this one looks the best for me. I don't know for you, but <laughs> it looks pretty good. But uh, we also need some styles here. Uh, and we, as we move the styles folder, let's just add a new one. Styles file, I mean, not folder. Styles.js and import. Let's just, it will be a lot easier to copy, a lot faster. And delete everything that we don't need. Good. Uh, hmm, uh, we can close this one. Actually, we can close for now this one as well. And let's import those styles that we just created. Mm, styles uh, from, okay, uh, styles, perfect. Now let's create, because these are getting very long, let's create some styles for them. So mm, current price and let's just take this out and say styles dot current price uh, paste it here fix it up with that shortcut that we told at the start about um and it looks the same the way let's do the same for this one although it's not a lot but to keep it clean yeah and exactly. consistent um and let's call it name, name because we don't use it anywhere else uh name uh -huh, like that like that and voila okay everything is good but these are very close to this part to so other. yeah very very close so let's give some padding on the top and some so let's start, try to give padding just for everything around it and maybe that's a bit too much hmm I maybe too much and say actually uh, I think this one should be good what do you think um yeah I think it's nice or should it be close uh, uh, the same amount of uh, here and only give it to vertical no i'll give it everywhere okay let's see uh, 10 no I'm too close 15 15 it is okay now we kind of need to uh, want to display here uh current price like uh, of the Per 24 hours, did it increase, did it decrease? Uh, so in order to do that, we need to actually wrap, um, let me think, let me think. Uh, in here, we should create a view, wrap these two in this view. And uh, here we will create, for now let's create a text just to see uh, simple data. Oh, it should be white again. Um, color white. Everyone is waiting to uh, until we get to the graphs. I'm also excited about that. So I can skip this actually <laughs> little uh, on the side. Uh, that one also looks good. Like yeah, okay, it's it's very close. Like the graphs are yeah, yeah. Like this we are little doing this button one, away. <laughs> and next one is the graphs. Yes, exactly. And let's give some justify content to center. Oh, whoa, 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 no, 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 space between or. And let's see what's happening here. To be honest, I would say that it's much uh, easier to. With the margin auto? Again? No, no, no. It's much easier to do the live streams, to code them, than to um, <laughs> to stay on the side. <laughs> you know, it's very complicated, very tiring. 
Oh, you just to look through everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can't imagine actually. For me, when I, I code and I do the live stream, uh, I I just get into this flow state that I don't feel that the time is passing. I'm just going yeah. all in. And then like I look at the time and, oh, again, I planned a two hours live stream and it's five hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, that's true. I don't. I have no clue how much time passed right now. The only thing is that it's hard to talk for uh, because I probably am not used to talking that much. As my daily routine is just waking up in the morning, cup of coffee, going to my room. Nobody talks with me and just coding. So <laughs> for me, talking a lot. Maybe some meetings from time to time, but the meeting is rarely more than one hour. Yeah. So. For you, it's already accustomed to talk so much, but yeah, for me, mm. you have to get through a lot of water. Yeah, <laughs> uh, price container. Okay, let's have it. The names are getting increasingly worse. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's another reason that the um, why it's useful. You you can continue going uh, to code. But why it's useful to split into smaller components because if you split into smaller components it's much easier to find names for things yeah. because for example if you have everything in the same folder if you declare a variable name or a style name then probably it's going to be hard to differentiate which name so you're going to have coin name title then coin name uh, subtitle or something like this yeah. but when you split out into smaller components when you look at one very small component like header and you see their name it's very obvious what that name refers to yeah i don't know if that makes sense but that does make sense yeah i agree with you for sure so right now we need price change percentage per 24 hours again but in order to get it here, we need to get to market data and then just simply uh, price price change the percentage for 24 hours. So we can do simply this and let's make it like that because it's getting pretty ugly as well there. And here, price change percentage, uh, perfect. But we need to make it uh, two fixed and how only two. <laughs> yeah, that was a, a big slip. No, uh, I'm laughing about Daniel's comments. Uh, Lucas, thank you a lot for your Instagram post. Your breakfast recipes are amazing. My mom loves <laughs> them a lot. <laughs> That's super random. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, follow uh, Lucas on Instagram. I think what's the tag, Lucas? Uh, I had the green avages, I think. It's going to be too hard to find <laughs> uh, Grinevitsis, Lucas Grinevitsis, or L -tash dot Grinevitsis, something like that. Yeah, he's posting um, breakfast recipes <laughs> daily. Uh, yeah, every day. So font weight, I do want it a little bit uh, bolder. And I think by a little bit, I don't mean that much. Again, I think 400 is the, the norm. The default yeah. one is 400, yeah. Yeah, so we need it a little bit bigger, 500. Now, uh, again, we need to export this to another component. It's just uh, style, to another styles object. Yeah, styles, uh, price change. Yeah, just price change. So that's going to be good enough. Price change mm -hmm. like that. Uh, I added a bit extra brackets here, but we can easily fix it like that. And uh, we do have it here, but we also need to add some styles around it. So let's wrap it in a view. Okay, like that. Just voila. And let's add style equals. Uh, and hmm. first of all, we need a background color. And for now, as it's minus, let's just give red. Yeah, oh, I think it's uh, easiest to start with background color because after that, you will see like how your container looks. Like if you need more space, if you need more padding, if you need to round the corners, 
um yeah yeah i definitely agree and we do see that we definitely need to round the corners here mm, okay and oh also we need an icon mm, and we use that icon uh, in coin item and it is here and actually we will get everything right away very nicely uh, 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 uh -huh, here and I need to it already it. has the, um, the checks for the color, right? Exactly. Yeah. Just need to import it uh, here, right here. And like that. Okay. What's price change? Um, can't find percentage container. You didn't just oh, probably? Here. No, no. I oh. have it here, uh, but. I need actually the same check here as well. So let's just grab it easily like that and put it at the top as we're going to use it in a few places. That's good. Not sure about, oh, that's the, the, the icon. So it always has to be uh, white, apparently. Even if it's red yeah. or, uh, yeah, minus or plus, it doesn't matter. And not here. Name we have to change here. Okay. Now it's final. But we need to make it uh, change the flex direction to row from column. Okay. Okay. That's getting better. Um, ours look very, maybe there's too much. It's very stretched in my. For my taste, maybe the um, actually the, the the font is too big. Let's go with no, no. The font is good. We'll see. We'll work work it out there. So it looks good. All, this red is just no bueno. So let's take uh, red from. I think it doesn't have percent. No, it does have percentages. Okay. But you see that it looks a, a lot more tucked. Um, maybe, oh, it has more space, uh, vertical space, vertical yeah, padding. Yeah, I think maybe that And just will... by adding it, it will uh, make it look not that stretched. Yeah, I, I think you are right. But we, oh, is no, it in, I... it's not in coin item. Yeah, it's uh, in you your have the here. colors here. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the issue with the colors is that, um, mm hmm. You've got it. Oh, wow. Now it looks, you see how a little bit of a different red made. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Now let's add some um, extra padding, maybe to, 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 to uh, vertical padding. Maybe that's too much. That's not enough. Maybe uh, the font is probably the font there is different, and that's why it's. Um, but now it looks it looks great, so don't worry. It looks yeah, it looks better. But I will do horizontal and do a little like that. Maybe three. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think I think this one is done. Maybe ten here is a bit too much of an overkill let's give eight um yeah that's more Perfect. or less good uh so now let's get into also if you would want to you could uh, put this into another component but because this file is going to be pretty big it's going to be actually very big if we continue because it has a lot of data and if we do continue i will you probably put this into another component, another mm -hmm. Lego brick. But for now, I think I think we're good to go. So let's see uh, to the chart. So first of all, let me uh, show you probably uh, the, um, the chart itself. And it is uh, called something like rainbow, rain, yeah, rainbow, 
React native animated chart. Oh, so we are starting with a chart. Yes. Bro, you need to announce it like, let's go. We are <laughs> starting with charts. <laughs> Everyone is waiting for that. Okay, so uh, I I'm sorry. I should have probably uh, put more <laughs> into the announcement. Uh, so yeah, there right now, I don't have um, yeah. that much some experience. Some drum enough. rolls, I don't know, some. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna do the chart. Mm, there are a lot of different charts that I was thinking to do. And I was even like talking with Wadim, which one should I do? Which one should I showcase? And we decided on this one, but as well later, if you're interested, I can showcase another library and showcase a different uh, uh, chart. But yeah, right now it's going to be something very similar to this one. Uh, right. and... What I like about this chart is that it's really minimalistic and also it's animated. So you can, uh, you see how when you change uh, time frames, it out very nicely animates to uh, to the values that it needs. And also you can point on a specific point on that graph and you can see the, the details on that specific uh, moment. So yeah, yeah, it's it's really nice. I'm... Exactly. Yes, I, I agree. I think this one is probably a little bit more minimalistic. Uh, that one is probably a little more detailed, but the, the animations and the scrolling, um, I think that's what bought us. So, and also it's, a little bit more of setting up here. So I don't think it's too hard, but uh, we do need to set up React re uh, Native Reanimated. And in order to do that, we go to their uh, website. And in here, uh, they Can you are, zoom in a bit on the page? Uh, on the yes, uh, let me just do that. Is it okay? Actually, we're going to leave this page very soon, so mm -hmm. <laughs> don't get attached to it because it says animated to an expo. So follow their instructions. We should go here, and that's what's good, uh, nice about expo. That's the only, almost the only thing we need to do is run expo install React Native reanimated. And let's open the terminal. Let's create another, uh, but we will have to actually rebuild everything. So we can stop the server, to be honest. And let's paste uh, React, Expo install React Native reanimated. Um, okay, let's wait a little bit till it resolves everything. And here, here it is, uh, it's done. Uh, the only other change that we have to do in order this for, uh, for it to work is to add this little line. Uh, uh, wait a second, wait a second. Uh, Lucas is showing right now. Can you zoom in a bit? Uh, yes. Our camera was on top, so I wanted to. Okay. You can continue. Okay. Yeah. So this was uh, how we install it. And the only other thing for Expo that we need to do is add this plugin to um, 222 uh, .config. config.js. Yes. And it's very easy to find it. It's here, just in your project directory and it uh, also keep in mind that if you have more presets and plugins here react native reanimated has to be the last one to import so you could have more here but the react native reanimated has to be the last one mm -hmm. in order for it to work so that's it uh we did this and also uh, like they say here you have to restart development server and clear the bundler cache and run expo start clear uh, in order for it to rebuild rebuild everything. And yeah, that's that's the that for expo setting setting up. Uh, we can just close these for now. Uh, yeah, we can close this one because we're gonna rebuild and this one because we don't need it. And just uh, do expo. Um, actually, we do have to install the library itself. So let's edit yarn. Um, you could uh, use npm install. I just use yarn add. I'm not sure. It's probably based on preference. I'm not exactly sure what they're the big Mostly, difference. Mostly, yes. 
before um, npm had some issues with security and that's why uh, yarn appeared as far as i remember but now with the new npm like i would say that's, it's mostly preference that's uh that's interesting to actually know and as it say as it said we need to do expo start dash dash clear if i remember correctly <laughs> uh so let's just do that and let's say yes i think it will open yes yeah, here development server mm -hmm. and uh what we need to do is uh, to run our application so just click here and go here so we might be asked to upgrade we're not going to upgrade right now but i'll i'll, I'll promise i'll do it after this <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah, let's wait a bit. Sometimes I usually need to press it sec for the second time. If I don't press update, maybe there there is some kind of bug in their place where if you press no, mm -hmm. it doesn't do anything. I'm not exactly sure. This is the solution for a lot of problems. Like if it doesn't work from the first time, do try it again. second time and third time. And maybe a third time here. <laughs> okay, I hope third one is going to be uh, a charm. How, how do you know that it, it's not uh, updated? Uh, what? It's How do you know that it's not running the application? Uh, actually, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it does. You you yeah, can let's close it. change something. Because yeah. I thought because it was said, it said opening, but actually that's a very good point. Let's add more percentages here. No, it's not running. Just close it and um, try it again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll close, I mean, uh, close the application on the phone. Yeah. Uh, oh, so it's be... yeah. Maybe I can just do simply go to Expo Go and... That's also possible, I think. Open it like this. New update. Okay, bundle. Is it... Yep, it's bundle. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Maybe we can find some interesting questions here. Um, Let's drink some water to stay hydrated. Yeah, definitely. And let's see, let's see, let's see. It's almost a lot of people are asking about the authentication. Uh, yes, guys, I know <laughs> a lot of people are waiting for that. Uh, but as I said, because I'm focusing full time now, all of my energy on the course, uh, it's a bit difficult to to create uh, videos for YouTube. So, but yeah, like I'm planning, I already have um, the plan for the next authentication video, which will cover uh, validation and form control using use uh, React form, uh, React form hook. So yeah, it's coming, it's coming. Yep, I'm excited for it too. So uh, right now, let's, uh, let's, Go through so our the... animated was installed, right? Yes, uh, we did install it. And uh, let's hope everything works. Uh, because usually reanimated, um, it has some issues with uh, running, for example, uh, you wouldn't be able to run GS debugger in Chrome if you use React reanimated too. So they're still working on it. That's it, it's it's already actually pretty good to be honest. So first things first, what we need to do is to create a, a simple like copy from their basic example, a simple chart how it should look like. Uh, mm -hmm. That's so, that's great. Like every time you yeah. work with some libraries, they usually provide some examples. So go ahead and just play around with the examples that they give. And it's going to save you some time of uh, going for documentation. Exactly. And it's uh, usually it's good. Like, first of all, you import everything, you uh, not this one, you set up everything and then you see, okay, this is how it looks right now. And you can and kind this of see is what it. I need yeah. and this yeah. is what I don't. Yeah, exactly. So we are not going to use monotone cubic interpolation. If we don't need that. Whatever we, that is. Whatever that is. So we need three. Uh, three of these. So chart provider, we need to wrap 
everything inside a chart provider, the whole, uh, basically almost the whole view. Uh, and I'll show you later uh, why it is like that. But mm -hmm. just for now, just trust me that we do need to do that. Okay. And um, then uh, chart path is um, here. We They kind of do this, like just create some dimensions and get the full width of your uh, screen. So in order to do that, I'll just create const uh name it screen with mm, i think like that and okay i need to import dimensions from uh react native okay and i I'll think you can use a hook use dimension no or like this as well i mean maybe yeah I yeah could... go go ahead and uh, do it like this but yeah i'm kind of used to this i'm not sure maybe the other way around probably it is possible to be honest and why I was changing in this place, I have no clue. <laughs> uh, let's go back and yeah, let's add it here. Mm -hmm. Dimensions get window width. And in here, instead of saying size, let's change it to screen width. And here as well, screen width. So oh. you are sending the width to our graph? Yeah, it needs to also be the full screen, full screen size. Yeah and hide half of the screen size. Yes, exactly. For like, uh, that's what they do. And that's what fits us probably as well. Actually, I'm doing it right now to check it out. Uh, yep. because I need definitely the full uh, width of the full screen width. and the uh, height can be adjusted. So yep. I'm doing this to check it out. Also, let's leave it yellow probably. I'm not sure, but it's um, hopefully it's going to be okay uh, to showcase. And uh, okay. So now it says that it needs points. Also, this uh, chart provider that we wrap everything in uh, can take some data. So first of all, uh, we are definitely passing smoothing strategy to strategy to be Bezier in order to make uh, the corners a bit rounded. So uh, it looks, I'll show you without it, but it looks a lot better with it, in mm -hmm. my opinion. And also we need to pass the points and the points are actually the prices per so in order to get uh prices as you remember in our coin crypto json file we have here prices and in the query i selected that i need prices hourly prices for 24 hours so that's what are we get, we are gonna do uh, uh prices uh, i think it's just coming from yeah it's simple uh, or, or is it from what, what does two prices represent? How is this da data structure like prices is an array yeah. of multiple so, arrays? Yeah, prices is an array of multiple arrays where one array contains the date uh, on which this oh. price basically was logged. So, probably uh, it's gonna be if it's hourly, so this can be 11 o'clock at night. Because so this it, is a timestamp, right? Yes, this is a okay, time, unit size timestamp in milliseconds as well. And the and, second one? And the second one is just the price that was okay. uh, the, the Bitcoin price. Yeah. Okay. So uh, now we can take this here, prices, and it's an array. And the thing with chart, uh, chart provider is that they required you to have uh, data with X and Y values. And so it's a different uh, structure for the yes. data that we expect, right? Yes, exactly. And in order to uh, for us to change our data accordingly, we can do prices and map through our prices. Uh, take, uh, let's say, a price object and mm -hmm. uh, return uh, for, uh, return a uh, very important an object where yes. x is uh rise at position zero. X is our horizontal line, and that should be time. Exactly. So, as you explained to us, time is our first value, which is that timestamp in exactly. the array of two values, and y is our vertical axis. And the vertical axis should represent the price itself. 
and that's why you're taking at position Y, yes. uh, one. Am yes. I right? Yes, exactly. And as far as you can see, we have some sort of a graph already. Oh, that's, uh, that looks nice. Something, yeah. Uh, all, but there is a nicer way to do this because look how long is this one. And because of some ES6 features, we can do it a lot nicer. So instead of uh, having here price, have an array with X and Y. So that's basically destructuring. And this now represents X and this now represents Y. And uh, just you can simply. And because you have the same names, it's going to be even easier. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought I'm going to cough, uh, not cough, but how did. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't, matter. it doesn't matter. Yeah, but because they have the same name, I can just simply say X and Y. And as you see, it works just as well. But here it's work. a bit of magic, ES6 magic. Yeah. And for new people, I guess it might look confusing. Uh, but the a direction for you to learn more about this is have a look at features like destructuring, spreading, uh, rest operator. And all of this will help you improve. Like, can you do a control Z and just look at how, what the difference, because the code yeah. is the same. It does the same so, uh, with V structure and with V structure. So it's up to you to, to decide like which one looks cleaner. Yeah. This one is probably more readable for new people, I think. But when you work like a little bit more, this one becomes like a second nature, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to know like how it works in order for it to be readable to you. Yeah, exactly. And so we see this Bezier does like we can, we have this nice. Uh, how it flow. will look without it? Uh, I can, we have to send it, but we can. There are different see. strategies, right? Yeah. So let's see. Uh, smoothing uh, strategy. Let's find. And here they have complex. Let's see. Actually, I didn't try complex. What does it do? And the thing is that with this one is um, we kind of need to reload it every time. Okay. Like go back and forth. So um, we're just RR to press double press on R. Yeah. Yeah. To refresh. So this is complex. Uh, uh -huh. yeah. I think uh, now I understand why Bezier is better. Yeah, there's one simple. Let's see what simple does. Nope. It simply doesn't do anything. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> simply nothing. So this one by far looks the best in my opinion. Now uh, we have this chart and we can also right away because of this uh, chart path er, and chart dot, we can slide it and kind of, you see that little uh, blue bubble? The blue dot? Yeah, yeah so, but you see, see the problem, it's, it, it is right now like doing whatever he, it wants. So uh, <laughs> yeah, what we crazy. need to do is uh, wrap it in a chart path and chart dot, uh, wrap it in a view. Actually, I oh. spent so much time on this that you can't, I can't even tell you. And now it goes oh, like that. Oh, really? Yep. And so right now we are only going through data and can see like um, if you click, you can see specific like on this chart. I'm not sure how to call it, but right now it's actually not doing anything. You're just like scrolling a bubble. On it's a dot. This. Yeah, it's a simple yeah. dot. Yeah. So first of all, uh, what we could do is uh, implement a thing called chart y uh, label and that's why we needed to uh, wrap it in chart path provider because everything that you use from this library has to be inside this provider and mm -hmm. it, i think we want if you scroll through this we want this price to change accordingly to what it was at this position that's exactly what i want to see exactly so uh, we are gonna change uh, this uh, current price USD to a chart. Oh, it's that easy. I, I was thinking in my head because I didn't work with this library, Lucas was preparing, and I was thinking in my head, like, you probably have to keep in state uh, the date about the current price 
and then re register a callback function that will update every time you move that dot around and then you take the state variable and display it. But as I see right now from Lucas, it's as simple as rendering a chart Y label component, right? Uh, exactly, that's it. And uh, this library has a very nice trick that I'm gonna go get to a bit later, uh, very, very soon, why it's perf very performant library. So first of all, let's format um, our data. Let's call it format uh, currency. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully that's a good name. Let's create a const format currency. Do, is it is this required? Uh, this is uh, how we are going to uh, update this value and okay. also that little trick. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, and also let's pass in some styles. So we already have styles and we're gonna pass current price styles here, like we have it here. And uh, yeah, because we don't have style. We have styles, but right now it's of course uh, like getting uh, throwing an error because this format doesn't format anything. So one very cool thing that this library has is um, so basically if I put this little work let uh, and close this little string, mm -hmm. it already knows that this sh uh, uh, function should be uh, run, ran and changed on UI thread instead of JavaScript thread, which makes, uh, so that I don't need to update this value with state. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so performant because you're only updating it uh, on UI level. And oh. also when you release it, it snaps back to the value, the original basically value mm -hmm. that was, uh, that is our uh, Bitcoin price. So, this is really good and uh, they have a lot of written about it and mm -hmm. you can uh, read in their library. They also have something uh, if you want to run specifically on JavaScript thread as well, but mm -hmm. we don't really need it. It seems like an advanced topic, but you you sum yeah. it up very well. Like it's, it's improving the performance of application by running this code on a different thread than your usual React Native code on the yes. UI thread that uh, runs much uh, faster in terms of uh, specifically U UI interactions. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, so what right now we need to do is always pass to this uh, format currency value. And you see we didn't pass here anything, so that's a little bit more magic, but you could write this like value, then uh, this, and then say uh, here, pass value. But it's kind of repetitive and kind of a lot. So you can easily delete this, delete this, and it knows like that you yeah, are because you don't need here. an intermed intermediary function that does nothing than yeah. take some data from here and pass it there. So you don't yeah. need it. You can connect everything together. Exactly. So first of all, to format currency, you see actually, we can simply uh, right now, where is that? <laughs> here, we can comment this out. We don't see anything here, even though we have styles and it's white, but it's not returning anything. That's why. So we oh, have okay. to at first check. So if value is uh, equal like to nothing, that's what it's returning at the start. And that basically mm -hmm. our current should be current price. Then we return uh, this again, little under escape. I'm not sure how uh, backticks are called. Yeah, backticks. Then uh, we say that okay, it's going to be a dollar. Then we with a dollar it's open be a dollar. Exactly. Then we open uh, this little thing. The JavaScript portal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then say current price. I think. Uh, yeah, I think is uh, current price. Yeah, and also uh, we probably uh, to fix two gonna do, and also this. Um, I think it will right now. Yeah, fail because we need to pass it as a string. 
and the current price to fix not function where why is this i think it's uh, already to to string i mean you to put it inside the string what's the issue uh it says current price to fix it to fixed is not a oh because maybe what's the um let's see uh market oh because it's not mark it should be current price current price dot usd that's yeah yeah so that's what uh, tripped me off a little bit but uh usd and uh voila we see see that's where is good. the graph uh so right now uh let's uh wait a little bit uh mm -hmm. but um, Right now, also, uh, if we need to, so that's if uh, just if the value is empty. But if the value that's here uh, is not empty, then we need to uh, return uh, another little magic to, uh, and I yeah, right now, mm -mm, I think we need to do parse float because it's going to return a number and it was it as a string. a string. Yeah, so parse flow just, parses your uh, number to a string, to a yeah simple string. So that's how we are gonna, that's what we're gonna do. And also to, uh, we should fix it to fixed uh, to, and right now it's good. But for some reason, our graph cha decided to change its color and uh, we need to figure out why is that? Because I do see this little bubble uh chart y label okay let's delete this one we will not need this in um uh, yeah that's why because uh we needed to reload so right now uh if we see we move this dot it shows different price a different state uh, a different stage different mm -hmm. price let's say all right so format currency will receive the the price data Yes. Where the bubble is at the moment, right? Exactly. So and if it I will press... return it as a string. So that's yes. why you need to first parse it and then to fi fix to, to render a fixed amount of decimal places. Yes. Yeah. Very, All right. Very... That's interesting. Uh, and now, well, the color doesn't really fit our application's uh, vibe. <laughs> so <laughs> let's uh, let's improve that a little bit. And uh, I think we can make it a little bit, uh, I know, more interesting just by checking. Okay, if the current price uh, of uh, the uh, bit, uh, coin cryptocurrency is lower than it was when it opened the market today, not today, but basically at the tw because we're taking twenty-four hour um, range. Here in. So at the yeah twenty-four hour range start because crypto doesn't close the market at open uh we're gonna take the first value and compare it with that so basically the first tick so basically you're saying like if today the coin is dropping then yeah. we want to render it with red because it's yes. dropping that's and very if it's... easy very good explanation <laughs> <laughs> uh so and in order to do that we need to go to take uh, all prices and we need to take the first one in an array of prices. Uh, this is the price at our, let's say, zero, zero, like in the midnight. Yeah. So it's basically this one. Okay. The first one. So that's when uh, this 24 hour period started. Okay. Uh, at here. And, but we also need to um, slow, I mean, this one, but we also need to take only uh, the, the actual value. price yeah the actual price we don't really need the whole object or this so let's do another and let's say at position one okay so zero is take the first price in our data array and one is take the actual price not the timestamp yes exactly okay. and we also need to compare like uh uh how we said current price that usd if yep. Uh, if it is, I mean, uh, bigger than uh, that one, that means we are doing. Do you very want good me to today. tell the colors? Um, I, I have them in my notes. Okay. <laughs> but uh, I, if I don't need to open them, if you tell me. 
for the red is E A three nine four three. Wait, wait, wait. E A three nine four three. And the green is um sixteen C seven eight four. Seven eight four. I did everything backward. Uh, okay, now we need to reload it again. And oh, we are only doing this for the dot. So okay. we also need to do basically completely same thing for the stroke. And that's what we maybe can put it into a variable if you do it twice. Actually, that's very smart. And uh, we, but that's a different. That's a different uh, color. Yeah, yeah that's um, a different. Yeah. Uh, we, that's a different condition. Yeah. So how do we? But call? it's actually, isn't it the same price change no, percentage? We're looking price change percentage. Um, if it's just below zero, we need to compare it with the current value at the opening value. And now we're just saying. Oh, current value is when you also. Like this uh, one. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's just say, call it. Uh, uh, chart color. <laughs> oh, that's a. You see that? Uh, I I saw <laughs> your face struggling to to find a name. Oh, yeah. So let's uh chart color and easily cons. Uh, huh. Control C. Close this here. Control C and here simple. Control C. Now let's save it. I mean, we didn't need it to update it. And no, now it's green, it... but why, why is green? <laughs> because, because the first price is uh, on the left. Yes, the, okay, the yeah, we're that... gonna, yeah, that's actually a good, very good point. So maybe I put differently though. So I just want to do one little thing is because this line is so, so small and I really need to make it a little bit bigger for my, uh... and we got to get to that problem of yours because I, I believe you are right. And let's reload it. Now it's bigger. Now it's a lot nicer. And with the green dot, we're changing the price. When we snap, it did. So now let's figure out what's the problem. Okay, if the current price in USD is mm, more than price, bigger, then then I think you open. Yeah, you must have the colors. Because 16 is green. Oh, but yeah. it should be. But it, it should, should be. be, yeah, because, uh, okay, so. That's Let, a, let's check the dummy data. Yeah, that's uh, uh, interesting. The so, price here is 57124. Which is lower. And that makes sense that this one. But where uh, is it lower? Because on the graph, it's not lower. That's interesting. So is it, it... it's lower here. Price change. No, no. Where is it? Price change percentage 24 hours. So in 24 hours, it's minus. Maybe that also has to do with uh, when is this price change 24 hours register? Because I think that even a couple of yeah. minutes can be substantial. Yeah, for for a coin as well, uh, very much. But then, do, 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 but then it's it doesn't make sense that this one is green. This one should be red. Then, but hmm, according it? to there to this data of there, it should be because uh, okay. So we opened here with fifty seven, and we closed with fifty six. But why the current is price is 50. Oh, I know why. Because why? I actually, when I was testing, I changed current price date. Okay. Uh, hey, you sneaky, sneaky. So I needed to test it. So I'm very sorry. It should be uh, 56, 96, Okay, now it makes more sense. Exactly. Yes, I'm very sorry, guys. So, voila. I just wanted, I remember I showed you. You wanted like, to test the color. Green. Yeah. And right now, if um, you see a green as well, so everything looking really bad here. So, but uh, with the, green, it looked much better, I would say. Yeah, with green, it looks better. It always looks better when it's green. 
but so right now uh, how are we doing with time uh we are three hours in three hours in so we have two choices either to develop this whole like more things in uh, this uh detail page or uh, hook up some navigation i think that probably we're gonna manage both of them uh, so uh -huh. let's add some simple uh, data about that coin um, okay. on so this page. I don't have the designs here. What I have uh, actually designs on my phone here that I wanted to do. So let me open it real quick. And I think that now it doesn't have to be pixel perfect. So we it can be like label and value. I don't know market cap and displaying the market cap. And what I um, really really want to do is actually, uh, which I think was uh, oh we forgot one thing actually the converter price converter. Oh, that's what you wanted to do. So yeah, I want I really want to showcase this one because this one also shows uh, how you can work with state in React Native, which is a very big thing in React Native, and also uh, with inputs. So shall we do that? I just yes. started drinking straight away from the bottle. <laughs> okay. So Cheers. I think we will have time for converter, maybe some more simple data. And then Let's go converter and then navigation. Okay, so first, so not first... convert and below the chart. Below, right? Yeah, that's what I was thinking as well. Um, so in order to for converter to first of all, we kind of need to uh, have text input because that's where well, what what Lucas is trying to do is um, you can you can continue yeah. coding uh, is to add a simple uh, converter which will contain two. Uh, text inputs. On one side, you're going to input the amount of the cryptocurrency that you are currently watching, for example, Bitcoin. And on the other side, it will automatically calculate how many USD um, is that amount of Bitcoins. And it's very useful, for example, when you... Um, when you're working, for example, even with Bitcoin, like nobody is going to work with one Bitcoin, but you have like 0 0.005 and so on. And it's very hard to do all of this math in your head. So that's why you just simply pop it in uh, a converter like this and you see how, how many Bitcoins are that or what's the value of it. Exactly. And it was a good way to like showcase this state, which is I yeah. think very, very important part okay so we have a view uh, in which we will con uh, which will contain basically uh two um uh, uh, uh how to uh, say like two more views uh so let's create them right away uh, hmm, let's close it and in that view we will have text and text input this one we need this one as well uh in the row uh hmm, row okay. now text input right now we're not gonna give any values to text input i just want to uh do this and maybe separate them in order to uh know what the what the difference okay now uh text input will require quite some uh, style properties, so, yeah, like and properties, and also styling is pretty. Text input is probably not the best thing to use if you're like React Native. React Native Elements has very good input, which is so much better. But I'm not sure if it works on for the text input. Uh, when when I started developing it, I just add there a placeholder to see them on the. Uh, on yeah, the screen that's uh that that will be a good uh place to start but right now so okay first column is going to be a symbol so that's what we're gonna do we're just gonna take symbol and we also as remember need to make symbol uppercase mm -hmm. uh, so also add some styles uh because it's not very beautiful um white uh okay we can already see that's very good and also okay let's leave it for a little bit later and for this one 
So for this one, we don't need really anything uh, as right now we are working only with USD. We can just simply say USD here, mm -hmm. but also like if we would work with different uh, cryptocurrencies, we could make so, uh, so that you can change the, uh, val uh, the USD, for example, to euros and yep. yeah, and vice versa and to more currencies. Okay, so we have our uh, basically two Bitcoin and USD values. Right now, let's start with text input. Let's start styling it. And I can already say that we will definitely need that. Um, we can say just simple input and the same should go here. let's go do we have yeah here yes input and let's start let's try to focus mostly um on the functionality here so yes yes add, add styles to to look pretty but don't over i will just them. add them so that we can easily like see them see and... something very um i because Actually, I have some files here uh, prepared for this because I was really annoyed styling this one and mm -hmm. it was kind of difficult as well. So border uh, bottom uh, width, we need one. Then border uh, bottom color, we need it as white. Uh, okay, what else? Um, we need some adding uh, we need some um probably mm -mm, font size inside as well i think should be better uh, bigger uh, i think oh, it already looks good <laughs> yeah it, uh, it's at least uh, readable and also oh the very important thing we need to display color in white inside mm -hmm. um, uh, another thing that i would suggest here um that we can focus is if you provide with 130 pixels, uh, it looks good on this screen, but yeah. on a smaller device screen, it will not fit both of them. So I would rather do a flex one instead of uh, that width, which means that okay, the okay. input will take the all available space after it gives the space to the to the, that stuff. Input flex one doesn't work. Um, uh i think we'll go back i think it has container what? styles but if we put it uh you will you will also need to oh you will also need to add flex one you know on what on the columns you see if you have two columns yeah yeah yeah, uh, so yeah that's that's why because okay, well, we can try this out i'm interested flex uh, one here will give it uh equal space to both these two columns and the flex one yeah. on the input will yeah and now it will grow and shrink with the screen size here you go that's uh, that's actually a lot better yeah solution and let's uh, yeah so also we kind of need to uh, align this one um in the center. center so align self center and now it looks a lot better and let's do the same here and that's actually it. I'm not gonna do uh, styles anymore. I think it uh, already looks perfect, bro. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's uh, that's that. We can now continue to the actual functionality. So uh, text input. Also, I can probably already do this one, or maybe just like we'll see. Uh, text input also needs a value. So value for. Um, for, for, for the crypto, for USD, it's always going to be the current coin value. So uh, it's current price dot USD. Uh, yeah, because uh, mm, okay. And also the um, the, the <laughs> Bitcoin will be the, one. Initially one, yeah. Yeah, initially it's going to be one. Okay. Uh, 
that's good. We uh, are we displaying color? What? Yes. Mm, okay. What else? So that's why, why, why don't we see it? Let's try to real. Uh, when you type, you see. I think if you let's uh, try to reload it. Text input value. Um, it's weird. Um, text input value. Is oh, value probably with a string. You need oh. to string. Yes, yes, exactly. So that's that uh, one thing. It only takes string values. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, you were right. So here I would do just like that. Yeah. Simple as that. Okay, that's a good catch. Um, uh, we're going forward. And now we also kind of we need a keyboard only numeric. So we can say keyboard type and change it to. Uh, uh, Maybe we don't need even an object. Change it to numeric. And this will automatically open the only the digits on the keyboard when uh, on the device when you press on this. So it's not going to show you the letters on the keyboards, but only the numbers. It's pretty handy. Exactly. And let's add the same thing to. Uh, someone already uh, is saying that that's not the smartest way to do that. Use a state and set the state by default to the current price because you need to update it. Uh, you know, <laughs> we're going to get there. Yeah, yeah. I know. Actually, I know right now. <laughs> and that's uh, that's where we are getting. Thank you very much for reminding yes. us. Exactly. So that's the last step, what we have to do. So basically, what are we going to do is say on uh, change text. And when we change text, we need it somehow to update. And as someone already said, we will use state. And we can't really keep this value uh, like this uh, the whole time, because even if we type here whatever we want, it will always be this price. So in order for it to change, we will have to create, uh, first of all, close this, and create a state. Component yes, state F. is uh, the data that uh, the components keeps inside um, its body that uh, he can update and um, the component will automatically re-render whenever we update this state variable. Exactly. Uh, a good analogy is uh, props is the data that is coming from outside, which the component is not responsible for. He just receives it, but the state is the data that is uh kept inside the component and the component is responsible for keeping track of it updating it and so on exactly so and to create a state first of all we destructure it from react like just like that that's uh we're taking a hook where i think if you're using uh these uh functional yeah functional components it, it's the best thing to use uh hooks with basically everything. Yeah, like in functional components, this is actually the only way to, to use state with yeah, a hook. Yeah. Yeah. And I already said, forgot the old ways of doing uh, class components. Yeah. I wasn't able to do it from uh, my head right now as well. And as a uh, coin value, basically, right now we have to set a uh, default value for it. So let's say default value as uh, current price dot USD. So, and right now, as someone already suggested, we instead let's of Let's add the other one as well, uh, while we are still there. Okay, let's let's do the same. So we need, that's uh, go, going to be, uh, oh no, so I made a mistake. So this is gonna be one. Yes, because, that's uh, what I was that's thinking. Co coin value. And this is um, money value, USD uh, value. USD value, yeah. As, do you plan to keep track of them uh, to to keep them as a string in state? Um, because I think that you're going to need to do some mathematical calculation, yeah, and it's no. better to keep it as a integer or a float, and you will make it as a string only when rendering it. I I agree, definitely true. So and that's mm. what we are good. What? <laughs> I said that, but now I'm thinking that on change text or gives you a text. It depends, like as you want. I think it's better to, for for me like that because uh, if I work, if I need somewhere in the other function, yeah, to work with this, I will have to parse it, and 
I think I'll do. It doesn't probably matter, but let's keep it like that. I liked your first idea. And so let's do here USD value, just like someone suggested. And in here, where is it? Uh, here. And in here, do coin value dot to string. Okay, we are going somewhere. So right now we we still cannot update this value, like no way. So in order to do that, we you see if we delete, try to delete, it always goes back. So in order to do that, we need uh, some kind of on change text, which we are gonna do. So uh, I think I will create two com more components. Uh, oh, two more functions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, one called um, change uh, coin value. Uh -huh. And the other one, uh, doo -doo -doo. the other one called, so let's just copy paste it. The other one, uh, one called change USD value. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to receive from there is value a string value and then we yes. need to update the state which is numeric value right uh yes uh so right now we are going to uh, pass here so this is uh uh on change on usd how did i name that already forgot <laughs> <laughs> change usd value change usd value and up top change coin value Okay, so um, I think I, I always like at first to console log. What um, am I actually receiving? What I like to do is console warn because you don't have to go in the... Um, that's... <laughs> but I debug. actually almost never use console warn, but that's true. I think it makes... I agree that it makes more sense to use it like that. And um, okay, so 562. That's good. That's what I should receive because I'm trying to delete this last number. And here I should receive nothing. That's true. And here, yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, so now, uh, what we could also do is uh, say value off to check what actually are we getting. Value off. I think it's all like that. Or maybe value then value off. I don't really remember. Value of value or what? Type of. Uh, oh, type of. Yes. That's, you wanted that's to what see the type for. of a value. And yes. Uh, what are we getting? So, so you are thinking like, is it a string or is it a number? Exactly. And no, not this one. It's this one. And it is a string. So that means. Uh, hmm. That means that before setting to state, we need, we need to, to parse, it. parse float, right? Yeah, yeah, we need to parse it. So now that I'm thinking actually which way it was better, but let's keep it like that, I think. So first things first, when you change the coin value, you need to set coin value itself uh, to the one that you just changed. So let's do value, I mean, parse float value. And also after you change, so right now, if we uh, oh, yeah, the, try to change something here, we still cannot do that because. Set coin value, okay. Oh, because uh, we are setting uh, the coin value and we are giving there. Uh -huh. Okay, that's. But that's, um, try to do it for the USD as well. That's actually interesting. Uh, set USD value and then parse float the value. Actually, I think it made sense to have uh, them. But no, it, do it doesn't really matter. So let me not parse it and just what will set coin sent USD. Yeah, right now it does work. Hmm, but it changes them. Um, why the parse string. float didn't work? Can you just console warn parse float? Uh, 
Uh, but no, it's it it low it, it shows. Mm, it shows a number, yeah. But when we are trying to set it as a parse float, C can you try once again? I don't know, <laughs> just for parse float value. Now it works. Can you restart and try again? Because uh, I'm thinking maybe because initially it's an integer. Right now, yeah, it's not working. Yes, maybe because initially it's integer, but then we set it to float, but I don't think it should be the case. So the thing is that you cannot uh, update it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, not, I... an, not a number. Not yeah, a number. Yeah. So if I parse it, then it's not a number. But if I keep it. Oh, you, you know what we can do is to set to parse uh, value or zero. Because in case it's an empty string, parse float will return not a number. That N -N -N -A -N means not a number. Yeah. But... And right now, if you delete everything, it should leave zero. Yes, okay, and you can yes. then. Yes, yes. Like, let's, yeah, let's the, the issue know. was if you delete everything and do parse float of an empty string, yeah. it's a, not a number. So that's why. Yes, 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 exactly. That's, uh, and do the same yeah. thing for the other one. But, uh, for the USD you value. See that the thing is that. Um, What's the issue? I'm not able to. Press. To do dot, yeah, yes. I think Let's... you are right. I think it's better to keep them as string, for the reason of uh, not being able to write dot there. Yeah, that's true. So let's uh, let's move to keeping the state as yeah. a string. Just like that, and this one dot. In situations like this, I really miss TypeScript. Yep, that's a good point. Because in one place you can have it as a string, in one place you can have it as a number, and when you try to call like dot uh, to string or dot to fixed, and uh, in one case you test it, it works, in our case it doesn't, so. Yeah, exactly. And here we also were able to delete to string because this will always be a string right now. Mm -hmm. So right now it does work, I can write Point ninety eight and here, yeah, as well, everything. So now the only thing that we need to do is here, if we change this one, that we need to set, change USD value, and we need to uh, take this value and multiply it by the current price. Mm -hmm. So how did we name it? Current price dot USD. And this will give us uh, the USD value. So let's reload at first these two values. So and if you change right now the coin value, it automatically the changes the USD value as well. Uh, it should have, but... But um, when, when you multiply, you will now are working with strings, but multiplication yeah, should so... uh, be done on a, on a float basis. So you probably have to parse the values individually, but, hmm, uh, okay, multiply them, and then to string, right? Uh, so here, uh, but that's, look, if I have it uh, to, 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 change, and then, Okay, yeah, I will definitely have to. Yeah, like the, um, right now you are doing math operation oh. with strings. So it's a bit tricky, like you have to parse, yeah. um, first of all, value to float, then current price to float, multiply them, and after that, transform it back to string, right? Yeah, but Different. actually, we don't need to parse this one. Yeah, that one. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, but now, how do we avoid not a number when parsing, when deleting everything? So let's um, do some checks here. 
yeah so like first, you do you you do the same like with or so you uh, yeah. add it to first, another variable like const i don't know uh, float value and we would do parse uh, or zero yes or zero and uh, i think that but, or zero is after parse float because parse float is the yeah. one, but actually both. No, no, work, but but... I think you are right because then it might have worked, but I think this one is the right way to do because this, you don't this need... will catch a, a lot more uh, issues. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, load value, but. And make it's... sure to transform it back to string after you multiply it, right? Yes. So. Should I do in here or create? Yeah, a you can function? do it in here. So let's have it like that, and then do a string. Yeah. But that's why this these text inputs are so annoying. <laughs> but because it's it has to like parse it and do this and that React Native elements, I think it works differently. But yeah, now it works. It works. Okay. Uh, let's do the same one. Whatever one. So one will be fifty six. Two will yeah. That's uh, good, and that's basically what we need on the other one, uh, which is parse float, and then uh -huh. set not USD value, but set coin value. With this one. And instead and of multiplication, you divide. Yeah, divide, that's exactly, yeah. Okay, let's see. Uh, so I have uh, 5,000, well, 5,692, no, 556,923. <laughs> A lot of numbers. Which, yeah, which is one. And that's already good. I can do 100,000. How many Bitcoins do you have? Just write it there and you'll see. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how many? 10 or how many? Yeah, exactly. I 100. 100. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, but yeah, that's how it works. So uh, this uh, needed a little bit of uh, both both of our uh, work. So we came up. Um, with... Where we're still here, I think we um, um, where we are still here. I want to uh, um, I don't know challenge you to do the same thing, but with use effects, because right now. Um, as I see the, these two values, uh, the coin value and the USD value mm -hmm. are, whenever you change one of them, the fact that we are changing the other one is a side effect. It's not an actual mm -hmm. action. I don't know, like the action is that you are writing there one Bitcoin, but the side effect of our action is that USD as well changes. So the way I would do it, yeah, I would uh, add a effect that will uh, be registered on our Bitcoin value. Uh, yeah, let's put it. Uh, coin value, you mean? Like we will have two effects, one effect on the coin value, one yeah. effect on the um, USD value. Exactly. Coin value. And what does that mean is that this use effect will be called every time coin value uh, changes, updates. And we can <laughs> register these side effects that we have in our application. Um, so this almost is... everything, but except set coin value there. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, th that's a good point. Let me clean it up uh, here. Like that? Yes, but I think what? in um, okay. uh, your I function think. functions uh, on change text of the text yeah. input. Right now, you can simply pass there the setter of our uh, yep. state. Set coin value. I think this one is coin, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this one. I think this way it's it's better because you look at the text yeah. input. What should we do on change text? On change text, we should update our state value. What's happening as side effects? It's not a matter of the text input. It's not the 
um, yeah. And another thing that I'm I'm just uh, thinking right now is, uh, will it go into an infinite loop? Because we change USD, then we change the coin, then we change the USD. Yeah. Uh, if it will, we're we are gonna just simply uh, do an if statement if the the value actually changes. So but what's the issue? That it cannot get this value. Uh, so yes, because there is coin value, right? Uh, yeah, we have to change here. Yeah, to the coin value, and uh, I think. Yes. Yes, and here to because the... it's a dependency of a coin USD value, and here is value. a dependency of a USD. Yes. Okay, the graph is a little need to reload. Yep. And um, can you change something? I want to see if. Uh... Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's it doesn't slower. go into this. It's. Do you think it's slower? It's a lot slower. And also, um, yeah, you see, and it's adding. well. They, now they change at two different um, frames. Mm -hmm. The first frame it will update the state value, and the next frame it will update the. Um, it will call the use effect and will update the second one. But from code perspective, I think this is uh, better, in my opinion. Oh, but it's like almost unusable slow. I think that it's uh, it's the infinite loop. Can you do a check before setting USD value? Check if um, you will have to um, yeah calculate it first of all. Let's try simple hello. Okay, and I have to change. Uh, does it also show how many times it was called? Nope, but it's crazy slow. I think yeah, because it's uh, as I'm saying, like the issue is with the infinite loop. So to fix this infinite loop, uh, take out the calculation of uh, that. Let me real quick. Um, but I mean, it changes. It only calls it as many times. Let's say okay, one, two. And it should have called two. Yeah, actually, one. it's not. Um, it's it's not. not an infinite loop. Mm. It's actually really hard to see why it is. Um, you know what's what time is it? Let's uh, try to uh, let people open application on their Expo Go, because we're not gonna get into the navigation today. So let me try to scan this, but you have to switch to um, to another type of link, not local, but on uh, tunnel. Uh, Do you have tunnel. it set up? If you don't, like it's gonna take up some time, so. I don't think I have it set up. I've never uh, done it before. So let me try to do on, uh, to do myself in this one. Um, uh, why I'm thinking that it shouldn't be uh, the issue with um, infinite loop is because use effect will detect this the, the, the part that is not changing. We are just setting to the same value and it just compares previous values with current value. It sees that it's the same value and it's not triggering by use effect. Go, 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 go. Uh, oh, it's, uh, it's QR. here. So let's scan uh, uh, the QR code on our devices. Come on. Uh, why my phone? Oh, now it opens. Let's see. Oh, no, I'm going to leave uh, that one here. OK. Okay, it's on phone. It's no, on the it's phone, better. it's super fast. It, it still performs. Like, for example, what, why is it like that? 
Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes, it's infinite loop. But I Something is not working. <laughs> a type 8 in uh, USD. In USD, 8. It just automatic. It put everything correctly for me. For me, it's like bugging uh, and it's putting oh. multiple. If you put 8, it adds 7.99999. And it puts 7.99999 four times or five oh that's uh, that's actually you know what that's how javascript knows math like when you try to i don't know divide a big number by i don't know a thousand by ten yeah it actually there is a chance that it's not going to be uh, 100 but it's going to be nine 99.99997 <laughs> But it also it it reminded me of. Um, but it also puts it a few times. I think it's. I don't think it puts a few times. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Click on a. Uh, okay, no, but if I okay, it doesn't. But then if I delete, sometimes Decimals it are does. Not working. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. Add. Something is not correct <laughs> with this this approach. The decimals actually that's a good question. Uh, someone is saying that the decimals are not working, and I'm checking right now. And that's this is because in my case, the decimal is not a dot, but it's a comma. So a string zero comma five most probably will not parse to float. So yeah. If you do on that string, just replace comma with a dot, will it work? But they cannot do that because we have a numeric uh, keyboard with which only lets. No, you no, no. I mean, let... when you calculate when you parse to float that coin, when you parse parse to float that coin value, do a dot replace a comma with a dot. And even though we will see a comma, your math operation will be on a dot. Do you get it? I was trying to, hmm, for me, not sure, yeah. but this one is uh, not uh, really working. It always like puts, uh, yeah, but that's probably because of Tuesday, maybe, hopefully. But it prints hello quite a lot. Let's try to delete. And uh, let's say, I think we would have managed to do um, navigation. But I think it's uh, it's already three and 40 minutes. And OK. So let's try oh. to fix this with decimal points, at least. Um, when you parse, for example, float USD values, do I replace, yeah, USD value dot replace because USD value is a string and the math will be comma with a dot. Okay. It's, uh, that's the structure, right? Of replace. Yes. Yes. And let's do the same for... Uh... So let me try to reload. Oh, yeah, yeah. So does it work if you do zero on the Bitcoin zero comma five? Me, it just like goes crazy nuts. What if I like, okay, let me just try to go to the, I'll save here what we did just copy the yeah the... and i'll go to what it was like before mm -hmm. what will if it's still that buggy i think that left? issue with eight is uh related to how um But I can press eight here. Yes, it's working now. And also I get a big number like what Lucas is saying. It's working with the decimals, 
uh, correctly, 0.5. Uh, for me, probably I missed the update, but yeah. Now it's like faster, a lot faster. And if I, let's say, do four point... But what if you do that eight? Eight, just eight, simple eight. And it, it works, works. yeah. Um, Let me try to reload it on my app. Maybe on applications are different. Nope, it works. So something was wrong with that. I know for me, the decimals are not working, but I think I just have to refresh it. No, the decimals are not working. That's, uh, you are right. So we just, what we need to do is- Oh, right now is uh, the same fix for the decimals? Yeah, so- Not that here, was... inside value. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. So that was uh, a good catch. Uh, let's do this instead of, And hopefully it will work. Mm -hmm. This one should have been like, okay, so. Another that. thing that you can do uh, to fix the issue of whenever the math returns 9999999, every time I say this, I remember about, uh, how is his name? Borat? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, now it works. Like, uh, yeah, there is Borat. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, there yeah. is Borat. Um, yeah, um, so I, I was saying that to, to do too fixed on the displayed value, mm, I'm not sure if it, it's But right needed. now everything works just perfect. Yeah, yeah, actually it does. I mean, sometimes there are, like in my case right now, I have 5000.7.0000000000 uh, 5, When you put what? I don't know <laughs> if I put five, no, uh, if I put. Oh, so if you put, yeah, yeah. If you put uh, 0.15, for example, it will have a lot of values after, but usually those values yeah, like are usually kind of Bitcoin. important. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It can agree. be a difference of, uh, I don't know, $50 or something. <laughs> okay. So let's leave it like this. Yeah. Um, can you There's demo so much a more that I want to do? manage to build so yes. far? Uh, so if actually, you put the um, phone full screen or maybe a bit oh. bigger. Uh, yes, we can actually try to. I've never. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Voila. This is also the first time I see it. So let's go from the um, home screen. Yes. Yeah, so let's do. And show a little bit of demo. Yes. Uh, where app and we're going to have to import home screen as well. Um, so there's a lot left to do here, actually. A lot? Well, you, well navigation. And I wanted to display more data. I want to do some mm -hmm. more interesting things, but yeah, it is what it is. So here. We have our list of uh, different uh, cryptocurrencies. They're nicely um, displayed. <laughs> and if you press, let's say, on uh, some uh, some crypto, it should have been, but it, it's not. I wanted to say if you press on a uh, cryptocurrency, you should go to this detailed page. But Yeah, but uh, everything is ready just... In the next video, we are going to integrate navigation and it's going to be uh, uh, when you press. But I, I think that it's good that we left it for the next time because uh, in the next time, you will also integrate querying the data and it will make much more sense when you press on Bitcoin, yep. you see the values, uh, the, the details of a Bitcoin. I agree. You press I on agree. Um, yeah, and it yeah. will make much more sense to, to have them together during the next live stream. I agree, definitely. So, and we have a detailed page with uh, some, with the price, with current uh, percentage, with a graph that changes color according to how the Bitcoin is doing with... Uh, Whoa, with a nice graph. <laughs> <laughs> with, 
<laughs> with uh, uh, okay, when it, the phone is in this mode, it's not doing very well. So let's try to make it. Uh, yeah, like this. That's what I meant, probably. So, uh, and if you like uh, scroll through it, it will show different time, different price on a different um, period of time, and also we have this converter that took a lot of time for us, <laughs> but it does work. So if I put 0 0.10 uh, Bitcoin, it's $5,692. And if for test, let's put like uh, uh, 5,692, I think it was. And it's almost 10 because it was point something. So that means the converter is working as well. Awesome. That's that's a really great, great job. I'm I'm so happy with how this application turned out. Um, what I like I, it's is the design. Uh, it really looks like top level, like minimalist and with with this graph, like I, yeah, I think yeah. that um, I'm gonna introduce this graph in my day-to-day -day job when whenever I need to render some data because uh, it was quite easy for you to integrate it. It took yeah. you even less time than with um, the price calculation. But yeah. I think that if you spend even more time, you can adjust uh, probably everything about it, right? Yeah, yeah. You, there's so many changes. You can add like different lines and different. It's a very flexible uh, library, which is very nice. Uh, someone was asking if I can find that. Uh, oh, here it is. Uh, is this library, um, I mean, someone was asking about candlestick libraries. Do you think uh, that this yes. library can handle this? Uh, this library cannot, but there is a library for React yeah. Native uh, called Victory Charts, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can render a lot of different uh, uh, charts even more. And actually, that's uh, what I wanted to also showcase if we do like an even deeper uh, application. Uh, like style side of this application uh, so that I could show candlesticks as well. Basically open detailed uh, mm -hmm. chart and there you can see candle charts. But yeah, you yeah. can do that with victory charts or something like that it's called. That's nice. So guys, thank you very much for joining today's live stream. I hope you enjoyed it and let's all cheer up Lucas in the comments below. Uh, and ask him to do the second part next week. So, um, yeah. Anything else, Lucas? We no, are thank done. you for having me. I really appreciate it. I really enjoyed uh, actually this pair programming. That's a really nice uh, thing for people as well to see how pair programming works and also how you can implement different ideas and take from each other. Like, yeah, for definitely. example, I took margin out of from you and uh, you didn't know about thin uh, yeah. hairlines and stuff like that. So it's really good to learn from each other and work together. I really enjoyed it. And thank you for your community for having me. I hope okay, they won't mind this, that you're, you're not, not you're doing, it's not, it's oh not my me. God, I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> we all understood it. Yeah, thank you very much. And we are waiting you next week, uh, Friday, 3 p.m., uh, both Lucas and everyone who is watching uh, the video join next week and we are going to continue this build uh, I think it's decided right uh, next next week we are going to integrate um, API calls and also navigation which is some of ideas that we have uh, yeah write down below what else what other features you would like to see there I'm thinking maybe some watch list or Something like that. I think it's going to be quite interesting to, to yeah. see how to integrate, right? Yeah. So, all right, guys. Thank you very much. Take care. Stay hydrated. And bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.